by the Department of Public Utilities as the presiding officer in this case. With me on the bench are Sarah Cullinan, James King, and Samuel Dauphiné from the department's... Is this better? I apologize, I have a cold, so I'm doing the best that I can, but if this is better, just let me know if you can't hear me, okay? This is a public hearing regarding petitions filed by Fitchburg Gas and Electric Light Company doing business as Unitil, seeking approval for increases in electric and gas based distribution rates and other relief. Unitil filed the petitions on September 5th of 2019. The department docketed the electric petition as DPU 19-130 and the gas petition as 19-131 and suspended the effective date of proposed rate increases until November 1st of 2020 in order to investigate the propriety of the company's request. On January 7th of 2020, the department issued notices of tonight's hearing and pursuant to orders of notice issued the same day, required Unitil to take certain steps to advise customers of the hearing. On February 25th, 2020, the company provided proof of service and publication in accordance with the orders of notice. These documents appear to be in order and are accepted as such. The Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Department of Energy Resources, and the Low Income Weatherization and Fuel Assistance Network are participating in both proceedings as full party interveners. In its September 5, 2019 initial electric filing, Unitil sought approval to increase its electric rates to generate $2.7 million in additional revenues. Unitil also proposed a performance-based rate-making mechanism, which would allow the company to adjust its base distribution rates on an annual basis through the application of a revenue cap formula. The company offered other rate-making proposals as well. In its September 5, 2019 initial gas filing, Unitil sought approval to increase its gas rates to generate $7.3 million in additional revenues. This proposed increase included the transfer of costs for certain infrastructure investments into base distribution rates. The company offered other rate-making proposals as well. On January 31st of 2020, the company and the Attorney General, acting on behalf of ratepayers, notified the department that they had reached separate settlements on Unitil's electric and gas filings. The company and the Attorney General have asked the department to approve the settlements rather than adjudicate the company's initial filings. Copies of the proposed settlement agreements, along with summaries of the agreements, are available at the sign-in desk where you came in. For electric customers, the proposed settlement reduces the company's initial request from a 2.7 million rate increase to a 1.1 million increase to take effect on November 1st of 2020. The settlement also provides that the company will not implement its requested performance-based rate-making mechanism. Further, the settlement provides that Unitil cannot file for another base distribution electric rate increase that would become effective prior to November 1 of 2023. The settlement contains a number of other rate-making related provisions. The company and the Attorney General have asked the department to approve the proposed electric settlement by May 1st of 2020. For gas customers, the proposed settlement reduces the company's initial request for a $7.3 million increase to a $4.6 million increase, which will be phased in over two years. The first phase would be a rate increase of $3.7 million, which would take effect on March 1st of 2020. The second phase would be a rate increase of $0.9 million and would take effect on March 1st of 2021. Further, the settlement provides that Unitil cannot file for another base distribution gas rate increase that will become effective prior to March 1st of 2023. The settlement contains a number of other rate making related provisions. The company and the Attorney General have asked the department to approve the proposed gas settlements by March 1st of 2020. If the proposed electric and gas settlements are approved, the actual dollar changes to customers' bills will vary depending upon rate class and level of usage. The company and the Attorney General included bill impact information with their proposed settlement filings, and we have copies available as well at the front. Further, any customer can speak directly to Unitil's representatives for specific bill impact information tonight. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to allow anyone to provide his or her comments concerning the company's initial filings or the proposed settlement agreements in order to desist the department in its investigation. 
At this time, may I have appearances of counsel for the company, followed by the Attorney General, the Department of Energy Resources, and the Low Income Network, if present. Yes, thank you, and good evening. My, good name, evening. my name is Gary Epler. I'm the uh, Chief Regulatory Counsel for Unitil and Counsel for Fitchburg Gas and Light Company. Uh, with me tonight are a number of representatives of the company from various departments. Uh, they're available to answer any specific questions that either the department has or the attorney general, or if there's specific customer uh, questions, we can try to answer them. We also have two uh, customer service representatives that are available in the back of the room. If uh, any customer here, we, we have two customer service representatives who are available in the back of the room. If anyone has any specific billing or service related uh, issues, uh, they're welcome to go speak with them and, and they'll take down their information and get back with them uh, within the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Matt Saunders and I represent the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. Thank you. Before we hear from members of the public, let me address a few issues. First, please note that a stenographer will transcribe your comments, so please keep your voice up and speak clearly. Please keep in mind that the stenographer cannot transcribe your comments accurately if you are not speaking clearly or if more than one person is speaking at a time. Therefore, I ask that only one person speak at a time and that the background noise be kept at a minimum. Also, tonight's hearing is a very important source of information for the department. Therefore, we want, to be a, we want to make sure that as many people as possible are able to speak tonight. So I'm asking that each speaker keep their comments brief and to the point and be mindful of the fact that there are other speakers who wish to comment. I would prefer not to interrupt any speaker, but if we are going too long, we may need to set a time limit of about three minutes per speaker. If you have written comments to submit today, we have placed a box out near where you signed in. You can place your written comments in the box and the department will gather them at the close of the hearing. Further, please note that this is an opportunity for you to provide your comments about the company's filing and the proposed settlement agreements. It is not an opportunity to question the company's representatives as part of your comments. Also, it is not meant to be an opportunity to question the department about the substance of the company's filing or the proposed settlements. Because this is an ongoing and open investigation, the department is not permitted to discuss the substance of any of the issues before us. Finally, when you come forward to speak, I will administer an oath to you. There are two types of presentations that you may make. You may give a sworn or an unsworn statement. The department will listen with equal attentiveness to both sworn and unsworn statements and will take your views into account in either event. The law provides, however, that we cannot make your statement part of the factual record of this case unless it is given under oath. That is, if you have any important fact that should go into the record, it would be preferable that you do so under oath. When you come forward to speak, I will administer the oath unless you let me know that you would prefer to make an unsworn statement. We have a sign-in sheet for those of you interested in signing up, and I have that sheet right now. I will call on people in the order in which you signed up on the sheet. After I call all of the names on the sign-up sheet, I will ask if there are further comments. So if you are not on the sign-up sheet, you will still have a chance to speak. The department acknowledges that today's meeting is being videotaped by outside media. The department does not intend to provide official comments to any media source today. The transcript created by the court reporter will serve as the official record of the public hearing. And we request that individuals videotaping do not disrupt or interfere with the public hearing. People who wish to speak today as part of the public hearing should direct their comments to the department and speak clearly. At this time, the department will receive comment on the company's filing and the proposed settlements. The department traditionally allows elected officials the opportunity uh, to speak first. The Attorney General of the Commonwealth is represented here tonight. Would the Attorney General like to make a statement? Um, are there elected officials here who wish to, wish to give a statement? Mayor, would you like to go first? Thank you. Good evening. I am Fitchburg's Mayor Stephen L. Di Natale, and I reside at 150 Walton Street in the city of Fitchburg. 
I'm here as a joint presentation for Representative Stephen Hay, who was in session in Boston at this particular time. Unfortunately, we meet again for a public hearing on UNITIL's petitions for both a natural gas and electric distribution rate increase for their Massachusetts operations. In UNITIL's December 2019 petition to DPU, they are seeking to increase electric distribution rates to generate 2.7 million, approximately a 4.1% increase over current total electric operating revenues. In petition 19-131, UNITIL is seeking to increase their gas distribution rates to generate approximately 7.3 million, an 11.1% increase over current total gas operating revenues. I know the kind lady made these statements, but I'm going to re repeat those. At the same time, seeking approval of a performance-based rate-making mechanism, which would allow the company to adjust its base distribution rates on an annual basis and changes to the methods used to recover property taxes. And I say no to this. In 2018, UNITIL continued to show strong operating and financial results which have translated to greater returns to their stakeholders. In 2018, their net income grew to $33 million, an increase of 13.8% compared to 2017. On January 30th, 2019, Unitil Corporation announced a net income of $44.2 million for year ending December 31st, 2019 an increase of 11.2 million compared to 2018. In their first quarter of 2019, the company recognized a one-time net gain of $9.8 million. Unitil Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Thomas P. Meisner said, quote, we are pleased with the company's financial results for 2019, shocking. Who wouldn't be pleased with that kind of financial growth? For 2019, the natural gas sales margins were reported at 122.2 million, an increase of 5.3 million compared to 2018, driven by higher natural gas distribution rates of 5.6 million. And now they're petitioning DP to approve a $3.9 million increase over current total gas operating revenues. For 2019, their electric sales margins were reported at 91.9 million, essentially on par with 2018. Electric sales margins in 2019 were positively affected by higher electric distribution rates of 1.6 million. Yet they are petitioning DPU for an electric distribution increase of 2.7 million. I'm here to tell you that the residents of Fitchburg cannot and should not shoulder distribution increases to recover whatever UNITIL considers a loss. Because when all is said and done, because when all is said and done, in the end, their balance sheet continues to see millions in profits. My office compared UNITIL's distribution rates to all the other investor-owned utility companies in the Commonwealth, and they continue to be the highest. I have a bill from a 95-year-old gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you please keep your applause to a minimum so the mayor can finish, please. Thank you. I have a bill from a 95-year-old gentleman who lives in a four-room apartment. His bill for January, the warmest January ever recorded, was $575. His actual fixed rate amount for his electric and gas rates was only $173. But his distribution charges and fees total $402. Does this make any sense to you? It does not to me. This borders on price gouging, price gouging and is a stranglehold on an elder with a fixed income. I read UNITIL's mission is to safely and reliably deliver energy for life and provide our customers with affordable and sustainable energy solutions. They are not affordable. 
Unitil's rates are the highest in the Commonwealth. We've heard that Unitil's small size compared to other utilities gives it less purchasing power because they have a small service territory and fewer customers to recover losses from. The size of their footprint in Massachusetts is not our fault. The losses that Unitil bears are not from non-paying customers, customers should not be a burden to the remainder of Unitil's ratepayers through an increase to our distribution rates. Unitil's distribution rates are definitely having a negative economic impact and disincentive for businesses to locate and stay in Fitchburg or any other territory they cover. It is time the Department of Public Utilities helps to curb the high costs Massachusetts ratepayers bear from the operations of this prosperous investor-owned utility. I want to strongly urge you to deny Unitil's request for any increase to their distribution charges and any proposed adjustment to base distribution rates on an annual basis. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been attending and speaking at these public hearings for many years. As state representative of the 3rd Worcester District, and now as mayor, and quite frankly, I and the people of Fitchburg are under no illusions the DPU will provide us any relief. For once, say a resounding no. They previously stated... <laughs> the previously stated fiscal strength of the company is quite clear. And any increase would not only be unfair, it would be oppressive. I call upon DPU to act for once with the well-being of the people and keep those who are serviced by Unitil in mind. And today, ladies and gentlemen, is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season, a time when Catholics, myself included, sacrifice by giving up certain things or behaviors in their lives. I ask that the Department of Public Utilities offer up a no-increased pledge in this time of Lent. And in so doing, secure your places in heaven. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Next on the list for elected officials is Sam Squalia. Thank you, Mayor. Dean Natale. Uh, my name is Sam Squally. I'm a city councilor at large here in Fitchburg. I live at 225 Scott Road. And tonight I'm speaking on behalf of the many residents and businesses that contact me frequently about Unitil, their prices and the difficult decisions that those prices are forcing our residents and our businesses to make. Unicatil's customers here in Fitchburg are largely struggling to make ends meet. We have seniors trying to age in place, and we have a majority low-income population in our schools with a struggling manufacturing industry. Of our resident general concerns, the top three has to do with their gas and electric bills being extreme and unaffordable. Fitchburg has almost 41,000 residents, 16% of whom live in poverty with a per capita income of $26,000. Compare this to the state average of 10% living in poverty and a state per capita income of $42,000. Fitchburg residents have a significantly lower income than the state average, yet our residents are already paying significantly higher bills than the state average currently. And Unitil proposes to raise the $7.3 in revenues through increases in residential gas rates, 23 to 28% on our already burdensome bills, with the impact on commercial and industrial as varies. This increase is extreme and excessive. We all understand the need for improvements in infrastructure, resiliency, and service reliability. But to burden our residents with the full brunt of these proposed rate hikes is unreasonable. A responsible business would plan ahead and manage their revenue better to ensure that we're 
delivering the best product at the best price. But that's not what's happening. Why are the ever-increasing profits of Unitil Corporation not being used and reinvested to better their own system? In 2019, the Unitil Corporation had a net income of $44 million, an increase of $11 million from January 2018, which had a net income of $33 million. And then in 2019, those natural gas sales attributing were $122 million, an increase of $5 million from 2018, where national, natural gas sales were $117 million. I'd say that I don't begrudge any company for trying to make as much profit as possible. But that is not true when it comes to our utility company making that profit off of our low income and working middle class community. I urge the Department of Public Utilities to not only review the profits of Unitil Corporation gained from the residents and businesses of Fitchburg, Townsend, Ashby, and Lunenburg, but review our accident, actual residents' bills. Listen to their stories, because I do, all the time, and they're often heartbreaking. I have no power to lower their bills or stop the increases. Only the DPU does. Having heat is not a luxury, but making tens of millions of dollars of profit is. The current gas and electric rates are already a major detriment to the growth of Fitchburg and to the growth of raising our standard of living for our working class and low-income residents. We cannot afford this increase. Thank you. If I could ne next have Christy Milet, please. And if you could just state your name and spell your name for the record, I would appreciate it. Christy Milot, M-Y-L-O-T-T, -T, Chief of Staff to Senator Tran. I'm reading this on behalf of Senator Tran. Dear Commissioners, hmm? Uh, dear Commissioner and members of the Department of Utility, I would like to begin by thanking you for giving the public the opportunity to express our grievances regarding the utility rate. Okay. The re utility rate proposed by Unitil Inc. Throughout the district, several issues remain constant. One of those sources of concentration State Nation should never be whether or not a family can afford to turn on their lights or if they can afford to heat their homes. The proposed increase of utility rates would not only be detrimental to families across the community, but damning to those whose daily take-home pay would be affected by these rate increases. Families across our district need to be able to pay for rent, food, and prescriptions. More concerning is for those of limited means, such as low-income households and our elderly on fixed income, who may already be stretched thin in order to pay for the life-saving medications and food. Unitil's proposed rate increases are mind-boggling and unacceptable in a city that is struggling for an economic revival. My office is aware of the Attorney General settlement, which reduced the company's proposed rate increases, but we will still believe the settlement rates are very high. We respectfully ask that you take into consideration everything that will be said tonight by the residents seeking for your support and for the reduce the rate and increases. Sincerely, Senator Dean A. Tran. Thank you. If I could next have Marcus De Natale. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcus Di Natale. I'm a city councilor at large. I feel like it's deja vu for me right now. I didn't come with a prepared statement because I'm worn out from these kinds of hearings. We do not live in a prosperous community. And the median household income in Fitchburg is hovering around $50,000. One of the problems with the city of Fitchburg is the residents have taken it on the chin for many, many decades because of poor financial management on past elected officials' parts. The residents 
five years ago got hit very hard with their water and sewer bill because the federal government in its infinite wisdom decided to slap us with a hundred million dollar unfunded liability, unfunded uh, man federal mandate to separate our sewer system. And the EPA and DEP said to the city council at the time, what do you want from us? The residents can afford it. Easy to say when they're not living here and they don't pay the bill. So the residents got hit with a 67% increase in their sewer bill. Couple that with property tax increases every year because, we, because of our tight financial situation. Our residents are champions. They take it on the chin every year. And in the case of Unitil, I'm sure people in this room, like anything else, that a service is provided, they expect to see a benefit. They expect to see if they're going to pay more, what are they getting in return? Unitil certainly is getting something in return. These people back here don't get anything in return. We keep kicking them and kicking them and kicking them. They've had it. They're beaten down. And I'm sick of talking to the DPU because every time we talk to you folks, Unitel gets what they want or they get a reduced request just to say that what we do tonight had an impact. We don't want any increase. As it was stated earlier in the financials, they're not hurting. And I don't begrudge a company making money in our capitalistic system, but look at what's it doing to our people here. They're making profit after profit after profit above their prior years. Where's it going for these folks? Again, they're not hurting. Who they are hurting are these folks. And they're tired of it. And I'll just close on this. One of the big reasons why our city and its residents make up 78% of the tax base, and that's why their tax bills are high, because they're 78% of the tax base, is because the 22% are commercial businesses. Commercial businesses have declined since the late 1980s, early 1990s. What's a common denominator in that? Unitil came online in 1992. Since then, our commercial base has dropped. Now, these folks get a tax increase every year. They get hit by these unfunded federal mandates. They get hit by Unitil because Unitil's hurting for cash. No, they're not. And now, because of Unitil as one reason for businesses leaving this city, who picks up the tab when a business leaves? They do. So not only do they get a 2.5% tax increase, because that's what the state will allow us to do, they get hit even more because the valuation shifts onto their side when Unitil does what they love to do in incentivizing businesses to leave or not come here. So it's a double taxation. This isn't a matter of we don't want an increase, block our ears, we don't care. You look at the data, they have gotten increase upon increase upon increase, well in excess of what these folks get in their social security, in their disability, in their fixed income. I know the AG settled with the, with the company and said to the city, well, what Unitil asked for, we cut in half. Well, I appreciate the AG for doing that. Anything above zero, 0.0% now is unacceptable. So please. Please, folks, I know you go through a lot of these meetings. Give us a break just once. Unitil's not going to suffer. We just read their net income. I'm in finance, I work for the private sector. Income's everything. But you know what stinks about Unitel? They know they can get away with it because it's a monopoly. These folks don't have a choice. That's why we need you folks to help us out. Because they don't care about us because they sit there knowing 
Well, where are the residents going to get their gas and electricity from? There's no competition like cable or internet. So I would like Unitil to spare me their sob story that they need the extra money. And lastly, I'll just say this. My grandmother passed away two years ago. She was 97 years old. She lived on Hale Street. She was on Medicaid, Social Security, very, very small income. And I have a, I have a disabled aunt who, who, who also is on a very fixed income. Unitil sits there and preaches to us that they need the extra revenue. What do they tell the people who make $1,200 a month and get a $500 natural gas bill during the winter months? I'm sorry, folks. I'm not trying to play, you know, anti-corporation here. But again, they're not going anywhere. They don't get their rate increase. They're not going to pack up and leave as much as we'd love them to do that. So let's, let's, let's just be honest. If you don't give them what they ask for this one time, they'll live. Instead of making $45 million in profit, they'll make 40. Oh, boo-hoo. All right? But it'll really help these folks out, even if it were for a year or two. We're at your mercy. I have been in office for 13 years. I still have difficulty explaining to people, because these people say to me, what are you doing, counselor, to get rid of this company? And I say to them, the truth. I can't do anything. They own the infrastructure. They own the polls. Unless we pay them over $100 million, which we all know we don't have, they're not going anywhere. So let's spare the theatrics from this company. They're making enough money, at least for a couple of years going forward. Give these poor folks a break for once, will you? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Andrew Van Hazinga. Hello, my name is Andrew Van Hazinga. I'm the city council for Ward 4 in Fitchburg. Sorry about that. Hello, my name is Andrew Van Hazinga. I'm the city council for Ward 4 in Fitchburg. And I think uh, Councilor Dean Natale said it best when he pointed out that Unitil's monopoly. And the residents of Fitchburg don't have a choice. If you go across the line, a uh, resident of Lemonster can uh, buy electric electricity and gas from National Grid and pay substantially less. But both of these utilities are buying their electricity and gas from the same places. So where does the extra money that we're paying go? And as far as I can tell, it goes to two places. Uh, the first is waste and inefficiency. And why should that be passed on to the ratepayers? That if they can't compete in the market and charge the same amount for their gas and electricity, why should we pay for it? Why should we subsidize their inefficiency and waste? And the second is this excess money goes into the pockets of the shareholders and the executives. Yeah. We've already heard that the company is incredibly profitable but also the top six executives for the company made over $5 million last year. And the, the CEO made over $1.7 million on the back of the taxpayer, or the ratepayers. So as far as I can tell from the, even the settlement amount calls for an additional $5.7 million in revenue, and it seems like that's gonna go straight into the pockets of the executive team. It'll cover a nice raise over last year nicely. So I don't think anything's gonna change, but I urge you to not allow any increases. Thank you. If I could have Michael, I'm sorry about the last name here, Tushmerick. Not terrible. Good evening. My name is Michael Kushmerick. I'm the president of the Fitchburg City Council. And I would plead with you to strike down these rate increases. Councilor Di Natale recently spoke about decades of economic decline in gateway communities just like Fitchburg. We've struggled to rebound since industry pulled out decades before. And we're finally poised for economic expansion. Industry is starting to reinvest. Businesses are coming in. And property values are beginning to go up. 
and all of this is imperiled by Unitil's proposed rate increases. I recently took a job in Boston, and these th past three weeks on the train, I've heard people talk about the value proposition of living in places like Fitchburg. In the past two days, I've heard them speak about their utility bills barely make it worthwhile for that proposition. Some spoke about how their utility bills are equal to their mortgage payment each month. That is absurd. Heating and electricity is not some extravagant luxury that should be afforded for only a few. It is a right. It is a necessity for everyone in our country and for those that live in our city. The governor and those bureaucrats in Boston often talk about economic prosperity beyond the city of Boston and beyond you know, 95 and 495. And the margins of prosperity are so slim in places like Fitchburg. And companies like Unitil endanger the chance and the opportunity for places like Fitchburg and North Central Massachusetts to rebound and to prosper and for those to succeed. I grew up in a low-income home. I remember my parents talking over the dinner table about tax bills going up, utility increases, and they spoke pretty plainly and in no uncertain terms about what that meant for them. And at the end of the day, that meant less food on the table. It meant fewer presents under the tree at Christmas. It was an impact each and every day. That meant extra jobs. That meant my father working 80 hours a week. Fitchburg is not a prosperous community. We can be and we will be, but not if Unitil has something to say about it. Every time they look to increase, it comes on the back of people like my family. It means no holiday presents, and in the most extreme end, in the most unfortunate end, it means they might not be able to afford where they live. It means they might not be able to afford to eat. That means elders in the cold at winter. And that means children hungry when they go to school in the morning. That is a sin. That is us fundamentally neglecting our duties and responsibilities to the people who live in Fitchburg. I know you're up there and you're doing your job and I know you have to be here through countless hearings like this. And I know it's not easy. You're going to hear a lot of angry and upset people, rightfully so. And I know at the end of the day, you're doing your job. Unitil will make the argument that we're talking small increases on your average bill, maybe 10, maybe only just words like that up to $25 for a ratepayer. I would remind you the word just doesn't do it justice. $25 for a family, that might be their only discretionary income or that might be their grocery bill that month. So I would plead with you to consider those circumstances for the people that this really affects day in and day out. Look beyond the spreadsheets, look beyond the financial data and bottom line. I get it, those things are important for companies and they're important figures for you to look at. But I would say look at the folks who are most Im impacted. The elderly, the poor, the first generation Americans. Those who struggle to get by day after day working 60 and 80 hour weeks who quite frankly could be broken by something like this. And I guess ask yourself as you vote and discuss and deliberate on this whether you feel comfortable granting rate increases at the expense of a child's Christmas, at the expense of food on the table, and at the expense of an elder keeping the lights and the heat on in their house. Thank you, and I hope that you strike these rate increases down. Thank you. Excuse me. I hope I can talk loud enough without the mic. Good evening. My name is Matt Saunders. I am an Assistant Attorney General with the Office of Attorney General Maura Healy. 
Attorney General Healy has asked me to appear here tonight on behalf of the ratepayers of Fitchburg Gas and Electric Company. By statute, the Attorney General represents the interest of Massachusetts ratepayers in gas and electric cases before the Department of Public Utilities. On December 17th of 2019, Fitchburg filed for an increase in the company's base distribution rates for both its gas and electric service. The company's last general base increase for gas and electric service was approved by the department effective May 1st of 2016. In an effort to retain the best results for customers, the Attorney General's office entered into a settlement discussion with Fitchburg. An agreed upon settlement agreement can save customers millions of dollars in litigation costs and can provide customer benefits that would otherwise not be available such as an agreement by the company not to raise rates again for several years. Utility rates <clears throat> in Massachusetts are among the highest in the country, and so any increase has a burden on Massachusetts customers and businesses. Any increase must be met with skepticism and dogged pursuit to limit the burden on ratepayers. The Attorney General's office has been working hard over the past several months investigating the company's proposals including working with industry experts who analyzed the company's proposed expenditures and operating costs to determine whether the company's proposals would result in least cost electric and gas service while maintaining reliability and safety for its customers. The AGO concluded that the company's proposals would not result in least cost services. To that end, the Attorney General's Office investigation focused on finding cost-cutting opportunities to lessen the rate increases and their impacts on Fitchburg customers. On January 31st of 2020, the Attorney General's Office in Fitchburg entered into two settlement agreements which were correspondingly filed with the Department. The Attorney General believes each settlement agreement achieves a least cost outcome the ratepayers as compared to a fully litigated rate case before the department. For the electric division, the settlement reduces the company's proposed rate increase of approximately 2.7 million by 59.8% to 1.1 million, a reduction of 1.6 million. Under the settlement, the typical residential low-income electricity customer will experience a $13.23 decrease in their monthly rates or an 11.2% decrease over current rates. For non-low-income electric customers, the settlement reduces the company's proposed rate increase. Under the company's proposal, the typical residential electricity customer would have experienced monthly increase of approximately $4 or a 2.5% increase over current rates. Under this settlement, however, the typical residential electricity customer will experience a monthly increase of $2.56, or a 1.6% increase over current rates. Under the Electric Division settlement, the company has agreed not to reduce rates again for at least three years. The Gas Division settlement agreement is slightly more complicated because with a gas rate case filing, a company can transfer the recovery of its gas pipeline replacement cost investments, that's the company's gas system, enhance, excuse me, gas system enhancement plan, also known as GSEP. And they're able to transfer those costs from their local distribution adjustment factor to the base distribution rates. Fitchburg's GSEP investments are part of a legislative program designed to replace the company's aging natural gas pipeline infrastructure to improve safety and reduce emissions. Accordingly, the company's requested rate increase of $7.3 million for the gas division includes $3.4 million related to GSEP investments. This is money that was already approved by the department in a GSEP docket. The balance of the $7.3 million increase is $3.9 million of non-GSEP related revenue requirement. Accordingly, the settlement discussions between the Attorney General's Office and Fitchburg centered on the non-GSEP related revenue requirement increases. Through the Gas Division Settlement Agreement, the company is agreeing to lower its return on equity, its re 
agreeing to a reduction in its requested rate increase of approximately 2.7 million. That's a 69% reduction in the 3.9 million of non-GSEP related revenue requirement and a stay-out provision in the company, excuse me, and a stay-out provision in which the company will not seek a rate increase for three years. In addition, to help lessening, lessen, excuse me, the initial burden on ratepayers, the company is agreeing to defer 20% of the base distribution rate increase for one year. Consequently, over three years, monthly gas bills during the winter season will increase by 13% rather than the company's request for a 23% increase for both residential and non-low, I'm sorry, residential and low-income heating customers. The Attorney General encourages all customers to take the opportunity to express their concerns and priorities. Your participation is important and makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from members of the public. I appreciate that there are a lot of strong opinions on this matter, and I want to remind everyone that this is a transcribed proceeding. Um, I must ask that we reserve our time in hearing people's comments. I'm going to begin with the names that I have on the sign-up sheet. So if Joan Malahi could please step forward. Joan Malahi. And if, and if you could please raise, oh, sorry, I didn't let you spell it. Go ahead. M-U-L-L-A-H-Y. Thank you. And if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make will be the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may proceed. Um, I, too, have been to I don't know how many of these hearings, and it just gets, you know, frustrating, overwhelming, but I feel that I have to speak up. Um, I want to talk about a few facts. According to Barron's financial publication, Unitil reported for 2019 an $11.2 million increase. Their operation and maintenance budget or expenditure decreased $2.3 million from 2018. Now, from what I read in the um, press release when they were requesting this rate hike, they said it was for, you know, um, maintenance and infrastructure, et cetera. So they've proven that they already paid less. So that's one point I want to make. The other point I want to make is I want to talk about the people in Fitchburg specifically senior citizens and retirees, which I am one of. Um, here are a few statistics. The median household income in Fitchburg is 51, 000, approximately 51,400. The poverty rate in Fitchburg is 17.9%. 12.9% are senior citizens. And 6% of senior citizen households, they have an annual income of less than $10,000. So when you're talking about a $500 gas and electric bill, think about that. 29% of the senior citizens in Fitchburg um, have an income of less than $20,000. And 24% of 60-year-olds are on food stamps, 60-year-olds and, and older, are on food stamps. Um, I also want to mention that, um, like, on one of my bills, and by the way, I get notices from Unitil saying, hey, you're doing great, you're doing better than your neighbors. Yeah, that's because I'm not at my house for like five months of the year, I'm somewhere else. So yeah, I'm doing better, because I'm not there. But um, for instance, on a $25 electric um, you know, supplier bill, 
I'm paying $25.69 for the distribution fee. For my gas, which I heat with, I'm spending like say $40 for the gas, but I'm charged $59.39 for the distribution fee. Um, I checked with a friend of mine that lives in national grid territory, and for the same amount, give or take five kilowatts um, of electricity, I'm paying 25 point, $25.69 for a distribution fee, whereas he is paying $13.77 for basically the same kilowatts except for five, five kilowatt difference. So, you know, we've, you've heard all the pleas. Um, you know, it, it, it's just something's got to be done. You, you have to think about the people and not the profits. That's what's wrong with this country. It's everything is about, you know, money and everybody, a lot of people are getting lost in the shuffle. So please, um, you know, think, think, think this over. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. James Norris. Good evening, sir. Good evening. If you could please state your name and spell your last name for the record to start. James W. Norris, N-O-R-R-I-S. Thank you, and if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you are about to make will be the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you, you may proceed. Good evening, thank you for having this hearing. Essentially, allowing any increase in the heating or electric rates is gonna make it difficult, extremely difficult for residents who are already struggling to financially survive in this town. This is especially true for people who are in vulnerable populations such as the elderly and disabled. I, as a mental health counselor for Community Health Link, have seen the negative financial outcomes firsthand. I had a client uh, yesterday who opened up a Unitil bill that was charged $580 for a month and a half of gas, and she lives by herself in a first floor apartment. Fitchburg already has a reputation of a struggling city with many citing the high utilities as a factor. When you go down to downtown, many open storefronts exist. Any empty storefronts exist. Businesses are cutting back or closing. If Unitil is allowed to increase these rates, that will further add to the problem. They will make the, this, the economic recovery that Fitchburg is trying to get involved with even more difficult. In short, any increase will severely, admit, will severely affect recovery of people and businesses. Fitchburg, quite frankly, its citizens and businesses can't afford it, and I am especially concerned about people who cannot afford these bills ending up homeless or worse. But thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Could I have Pat McPhee please step forward? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Patrick you, McPhee. And if you could please spell your last name for the record. M-C-P-H-E-E. -E. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. A um, couple of questions. One, I understand you're here as the Attorney General as your job, but the fact that you did a three-year contract and you're going to just get over her next election is not looking out for the best interest. She's not looking out for our interest. With an 18% below poverty level, you should not even be negotiating a contract with them. You should be asking for a civil rights discrimination violation against them. Right. Right. That's what the Attorney General should look at. And if, you're, and if you're not looking at it, the board should be looking at that. Now, both of you, as an open meeting law, you should not be having meetings behind the scenes with anybody, including legislation, including lobbyists. And you should be affirming to that. The second thing on this whole thing is, is if you take a house in Marshfield at a 5,000 square foot home and you take a house in this area of 2,000 square feet, they're one quarter of the cost of what it does here. 
you should not be looking at. When you tried to do this with Roxbury, the Attorney General stepped in before as a discrimination issue. Now their poverty level is 5% below. You shouldn't be even looking at this. The second thing is <clears throat> the national grid. I understand their footprint, but their president of the company, including their general counsel, gets paid as if they work for national grid. You're not taking that into consideration. You're not taking the cost reduction. That person should not be getting that much money. Neither should the general counsel or the employees. Now let's take what we did during the ice storm and what we agreed to have done. One of the ice storm issues was the call center. The call center was not taking calls. We agreed that they would increase the call center instead of off-netting it. Yet, if you, because they would have better capabilities of handling the questions of the individuals. The Attorney General fought for that, but we see nothing about it. Call center on the last storm had nobody in there. You could get better answers from the emergency management system. Now the emergency management system does not want to take calls because any time over 10 people call, they have to call in another body. Third person, the governor's got to be notified there's an emergency. Okay? So that's probably where you should be doing your calls. That's what we did during the ice storm. You dial the 978-328 number, 1500, after 10 people, the, the, attorney, the governor gets called. Now, the national grid, they didn't do this. On the call center, they're going to come back and say they're going to want you to use their software. Okay? After Iowa caucus, I wouldn't touch another software. Um, the, I the IRS has a better call center than National Grid. National Grid, when you call, you get no answer. You wait hours for a call. And this was something you addressed during the ice storm, and you supposedly had ensured that it would never happen again. That hasn't happened. We paid for that to be increased. We paid for all that. Well, you asked for a rate increase for that. What happened? It went away. <clears throat> the other thing that you have is you have on this, when there is an outage, they're not notifying National Ma Massachusetts Management System, which you should be looking at because if there was ever a public safety issue on a grid issue, they have no idea as to what's going on. And they're supposed to also be notifying the feds so that they know when an infrastructure goes down. Not your call center just saying, it's going to be out for, six hour for three hours when it actually turns out to be ten. The other thing is, you were supposed to address the, the, having a backup system so that the governor, Patrick, didn't have to call into the issue of calling people from Jersey or Philadelphia up here to assist them. We had no resources available when we had this last outage in this area. They didn't call anybody in. They didn't call National Grid, which they're supposed to be making a partnership agreement, which the Attorney General guaranteed was going to happen. Okay. After this has been granted, what's going to happen is the same thing that happened during the ice storm. They went and got grants from the federal government for recovery. That was not included into their loss. They then filed for the federal, co federal government grants. You gave us a grant on our back, and then they get, they, we got hit by the federal government for taxes to pay for another grant that they received. They also participated in the smart grid program, where they got federal funds to do the smart meters and the smart grids. Okay. We don't see any of that. They still write it off as a loss because they'll get it after you give the grant. <clears throat> the interstate commerce. Now, these people are part of New Hampshire and Massachusetts. I'm sorry their board of directors is not intelligent enough to do a purchase distribution charge of a whole group that he's saying that he's only doing it for Massachusetts. No, I'm sorry. They have a big footprint. And if he's not intelligent enough, then the board needs to look at getting rid of them. Okay? <clears throat> I'm also going to raise the board members that they have are paid equal to national grid board members for what they consider Massachusetts to be a small footprint, and yet you have an increase in the rate. <clears throat> Basically, you've got the interstate commerce. There was also an act on page, 190, on page 1938 of the congressional report about overcharging. Federal government has an oversight to oversee you, and that's where the interstate comes in. And if you're not doing their job, then the feds have to, and the state U.S. representatives should be here telling the attorney general they're not doing their job. You also have the Utility Cons Consumer Council Act of 1969, okay? There is a percentage of rate increase that you can give. Not 20%, not 40%, which is what you've been doing. Because if you look at National Grid stock, National Grid stock is doing better than Microsoft. They started out at $7.32 when they bought. They're up to $68 now. Okay? That's better than Microsoft increase. That's, that's three times what National Grid gets for an increase. 
Now, let's take, the dis let's take the dividends that's given. The dividends equals to what the percentage that they're supposed to be getting under the federal law for their investment, those investors. So why are you asking for more money to raise the investments dividends? To give them $20, $30 sometimes they get. Why are you doing that? You're violating the federal law yourself. Okay, and that's where you should be coming in. Now, I do understand that Martha's made sure that the timing of this is going to be after her next election. I'm sorry, that shouldn't, have done, that shouldn't be happening. She should be in here doing a discrimination when you've got areas in Massachusetts that are doing better. I think that's about it. <laughs> I think I hit a lot. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Owen Ross, if you could please step forward. Good evening, sir. Hello. If you could please state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. Uh, my name is Owen Ross. That's R-O-S-S. -S. Thank you. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you are about to make will be truthful? Yes. You may proceed. OK. So I'd like to start with um, some data on electricity costs in the state of Massachusetts. The average residential electricity rate in Massachusetts is 14.91 cents per kilowatt hour, which ranks the ninth highest in the United States. There are 351 townships in the state of Massachusetts. Fitchburg ranks 340th out of 351 by per capita income, making it the 11th lowest income city in the state. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Now, um, the average residential electricity rate in Fitchburg is also 42.68% greater than the national average rate of 11.88 cents per kilowatt hour. Let's compare Fitchburg to one of the higher income locations in Massachusetts, Newburyport, which is 60th out of 351 by income. The average residential electricity rate in Newburyport is 13.13 cents per kilowatt hour. This is 11.94% less than the Massachusetts average rate. The 11th poorest city in this state has an electricity rate nearly 14% higher than the state average, while one of the wealthiest cities has a rate nearly 12% less than the state average. Let's compare Fitchburg to our neighboring town of Lemonster. Lemonster ranks 290th by per capita income out of 351 townships, yet has the same rate as Newburyport. This average, um, this average rate in Lemonster is also 11.94% less than the Massachusetts average rate. We're paying significantly more than both our neighbors and the wealthiest communities in this state. We are one of the poorest cities in the state, yet we already pay well in, in excess of the state average. It is unconscionable and predatory to further squeeze more revenue from a low income and working class community. These high rates are a hindrance to small business growth. Storefronts sit vacant and doors continue to close due to the outrageous utility costs in this city. We are unable to attract new residents and new businesses to our community due to the economic conditions Unitel has already levied on us. This is why I emphatically voice my objection to the raising of utility rates in Fitchburg. If our aim is to attract new residents and new businesses to our community and to support the hardworking people of this city, I invite everyone here tonight to join me in opposing any further rate increases in this city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Tara Rivera, please step forward. Good evening, ma'am. Hi. If you could please state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. Tara Rivera, R-I-V-E-R-A. Thank you. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make will be the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may proceed. Um, just a couple quick points. So um, I just wanted to mention I'm a homeowner here. 
um, in the city of Fitchburg. I work full time um, and my electric and gas bill is about $650 during the winter months, um, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, and, you know, I don't have the financial hardships, uh, luckily, that, you know, a lot of the other residents and my neighbors do. Um, and I struggle with paying that. So in addition to that, I just wanted to say that I had my meter moved from my basement to the outside of my house uh, about a year and a half ago. And Unitel came, gave me very little communication about what was happening. Um, in addition to that, they sent me threatening letters because I didn't schedule a visit within their time frame. Um, at the time, I was working two jobs, and I'm a single mom. Um, so after the threatening letters, I finally made the appointment. Um, they ended up bringing the meter from my basement and putting it on the front of my house. Um, which didn't make any sense at all, and they tore up my entire front yard. Um, I had to then have them come back after last winter and move it to the right side of my house where the rest of my meters reside, and then they had to obviously pay to redo my lawn. So um, there was a huge lack of communication. They were extremely threatening and rude to work with. Um, it was just a very unpleasant situation. Secondly, I wanted to say that I'm also on the a board of two faith-based organizations here that operate in the city of Fitchburg and serve the residents of Fitchburg and beyond. Um, our heat bills are astronomical in both of those locations, um, over $600 a month average, some even over $800 a month on average. Um, lastly, I just want to say that I'm also on the leadership team for the Joint Coalition on Health, which operates here um, in Fitchburg and the local communities that surround Fitchburg. Um, the Joint Coalition on Health is an advocate uh, for the underserved population, and it's our job to be a voice for that community. Um, I just want to say that we got a heartbreaking call from a disabled elder here in Fitchburg who had just gotten off the phone with a Unitil representative. She called them regarding her bill and was asking for a payment plan. The bill for her tiny apartment was $500 for one month. She told, was, she told me that their response to her was that she should put on a sweater, lower her heat, and shut everything off. Thank you. If I could have Luis Anicia Figaro. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. My name is Luis Anicia Figaro. And um, I am a CNNS, and I just moved. If I could just interrupt you for one second. If you yes. could spell your last name for the record, please. Oh, Figaro. F-I-G-A-R-O. Thank you. And if you could raise your right hand. Yes. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you are about to make are the truth? Yes. Okay, now you may proceed. Yes. Um, I just moved to Fitchburg, uh, like uh, Feb um, January, like the, the end of January. We bought an house there, and uh, when I received the bill, I was shocking because uh, um, they sent me the bill in January, and we moved in uh, January, but we bought the house uh, like December, and when I received the bill, I was shocked, and when I called the company, and they told me that was the bill I have because I did not stay in the, uh, moved in the house yet. We just put the heat on, just a low heat, so the pipe wasn't frozen. And they told me they cannot do nothing about that when I said, can, we, can you put me in a low income? Like, uh, they said, no, they cannot do nothing because I just moved. I have to wait for 12 months before they put me to a uh, low rate team. Okay, so now this month I have the bill like uh, 1,000. So that's, that's shocking because, you know, I am a CNN nurse and then I am living with my two kids and uh, my mother supposed to move and not moving yet. And she's like uh, 66 years old and um, she's retired now. And she has trouble with her legs sometimes, she has cramp. And I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have to feed my kids, I have to, I, I, I put my 
two hands on my head. I said, wow, what I'm going to do? Because I have to get the house warm up for my mother. Too. So that's what I was, uh, I was about to, to say, to do something about that. Because there's elderly, elderly people, they need to eat. And we cannot leave our children without feeding too. So I don't know what's going to happen. That's, that's all. Thank you, ma'am. Pam Markham. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. If you could state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. My name is Pam Markham, M-A-R-K-H-A-M. Thank I you. I reside at 21 Linden Street, Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Thank you. If you could raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that your comments that you're about to make are the truth? I do. You may proceed. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to stop and take a moment and thank every speaker who has come before me this evening. Unbelievable how they inspire me and how they educate me. I went to the Google today or the other day and did some background checks on Unitil. Not that I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted to be make sure that they are the highest one in Massachusetts that is known. But I also wanted to come here and sit here and talk to you. How can you realistically even think of raising your bills to us? I don't have a problem paying my bill, okay? But a lot of people do. And someday I might have. I just want to know. Every night you go to bed, how can you shut your eyes and know that the people that are paying for your job, for your job, paying your salary, are going to bed cold? I brought my bill here because I've had fights with you people on the phone. Why am I paying $200? more than what I actually used? Why is my bill $333 when I only used $160? Because you're taking it. I'm in business. I don't deprive anybody of making a profit. You've made your profits. You've been giving them already. Time now is to give back. Stop it. Greed is killing this country. Thank you. The next speaker on the list, I apologize in advance. Um, I can't read your handwriting. I believe it's um, Pius Corain. Good evening, sir. If you could please state your name. I'm sure. uh, certainly. Uh, first name is Pius, P-I-U-S. Last name's Karain, K-I-R-R-A-N-E. And uh, I've got a cold, too, so ho hopefully won't lose my voice. Um, if I could swear you in for a second. Oh, step? certainly. Sure. If, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make will be the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. I, I want to thank everybody that, that's here. It's uh, a, a great showing and our, um, our representatives to come in and talk. I, I won't waste a lot of time because they've already, you know, said what needs to be said. I'm a ratepayer. I don't agree with this. I, I certainly don't agree either with the, after looking at the um, attorney generals. Uh, I don't see any reduction. All I see is they'll take a little less and they'll still make something. And something that really struck me as uh, sitting there is I work in a company we don't have anybody to go to and say, oh, please give us more. I either have to reduce costs, re-engineer, work more efficiently, make more sales. 
I, I, don't, I don't have that ability to go and say, oh, please give me a rate increase because I want to do something. It's already been shown. Unitil makes a profit at least over the years, uh, $70 million in net income. I, I don't know why we need to give them more. They seem to be doing well. Uh, matter of fact, it's been brought up a couple of times that uh, the six top executives have already made this year over $5 million, but yet they want to take more from us. Uh, their CEO had a bonus of 400, 000, over 400000 I In my company, that would be awesome to get a bonus like that or even to get a raise. I, that doesn't happen. If you're not doing your job, not making the money, you're not getting that. I don't agree with this. Uh, I've never seen a, a decrease in my bill other than when it's warm. It, it Maybe uh, global warming will keep on going. Then I won't have to pay high utility bills in the winter. But I've never seen any reductions. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, this year has been great because it has not been that cold. So anyway, as a ratepayer, I do not agree with this at all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Kathy Clark, if you could please step forward. Hello. Good, Good evening, evening. ma'am. If you could state your name and spell your last name for the record. Sure. It's Kathy Clark, C-L-A-R-K. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? I do. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you. Well. I think uh, Marcus Di Natale said it well. We've been there, done this many, many times, and frankly, it's shameful. For 12 years now, 12 years since the ice storm, I've been speaking out about Unitil. It seemed blaringly obvious during the ice storm, um, and that wasn't the first time we were without power for an extended period of time that there was something wrong, and it wasn't just communication and gross failures, as the AG's office found later. Uh, but there were numerous things. Um, let me read what I have written here. Um, okay. As I stand before you tonight, I'm reminded not just of the repeated plea from the ratepayers of this region, but specifically individuals I've met along the way, burdened with unjust bills that are incomprehensible. I think you've heard a few of them tonight from the many residents with regular monthly bills into the hundreds each month that leave them penniless to the business owners trying to sustain in this region. I'm also a realtor and I've rented um, spaces in our town and too often the cost of Unitil has been a factor in people not wanting to rent. Always a challenge. I could stand here and quote you my bill which has been checked numerous times and just simply doesn't make sense. And that's for my small office space that I use. Um, but rather, I will just go on record with the following. In Unitil's previous request, they indicated as part of their filing that they are looking for a mechanism to provide for annual revenue increases in between base rate proceedings to reflect an amount the company believed the cost of providing safe and reliable service. That was a couple of years ago. Their latest request, reflected in print to ratepayers, was for 2.7 million, was to recover from revenue deficiency. That's why we're here, revenue deficiency. It's just insulting. At the same time, Unitil reported their net income at 44 million in 2019. Electric sales decreased due to consumers using energy efficiencies. At the same time it was reported, their operation and maintenance expenses decreased as well. As I have testified in the past, as a result of their subpar infrastructure, they are reported to have distribution losses of 4.6% to 5.2% as compared to only 35 to 4% of municipal utilities. Higher distribution losses are an indication of the distribution networks being not maintained properly. Many distribution networks, many distribution circuits, and investor-owned utilities like Unitil remain less efficient while compared to municipal utilities which have upgraded and proven their effectiveness in major storms. Their use of spacer cable to support the system and tree wire have shown that quality infrastructure does make a difference with outages during storms. 
this is what is needed in our region, and this truly is what we are paying for and not getting. As the hopefully next state representative in the 37th district, it will be my absolute intention to help bring much needed change to this region. And you can bet, Mr. Epler, the next conversation we have will be about municipal choice, because I will fight like hell to bring it, and I will get everybody in the house to support it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Samuel Gatton, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. If you could please state your name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Samuel Gatton, spelled G-A-T-T-O-N. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? I do, ma'am. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, pretty much everything I wanted to say tonight has already been said in multiple different ways by multiple different people. But why should we, the people, have to pay for you, the corporation? Why should the people that are already struggling to survive on every kind of assistance that they can get, myself included, I am a disabled Marine. I went and did three combat tours myself in an infantry unit. Um, I don't have anything else to live for. Thank you. I don't have anything other than my disability income. I cannot work. And if I can, it's not a very physical, enduring job. I can barely walk, I can barely move. It's part of the reason I bought a condo. First time house buyer, just got it a couple months ago. My first bill wasn't too bad. I was only there for the first two months. My second, third, fourth, and now fifth, sixth bill, I couldn't eat for about three weeks. More than, you know, basic rum and basic cheap stuff. There's no reason for that. My mother lives in a very wealthy, profitable, beautiful house that's about $450,000 in the town of Air, Massachusetts on a lake. It's actually lakeside. Her house is 1,800 square feet, including a finished basement that adds on to that square footage. She has natural gas as well as electric from National Grid. Her bill is a quarter of the price to keep it at 68 degrees. My thermostat hasn't gone above 60 this entire winter. My bill has been over $300 just about every time. There's no reason for it, especially with all the statistics everyone's brought before you. I don't see why there should be any increase. This will put me out of a house. I will go bankrupt, and I will have no choice, and I have nowhere to go. The VA won't help. My mother is moving in and getting married. Congratulations to her. But I have nowhere to go. I'm a full-time student. Thank God for the GI Bill, but everything else I don't have. I don't have four, five, six hundred dollars. And the worst part of it is, on the flyers that you sent out with Unitel's bills, they want to increase the bill even more. I believe it stated about forty-eight to fifty dollars, only in the winter time. What is wrong with you people? If you can sit there and justify increasing people's bills in New England winter when 60 degrees feels like 30 and 70 feels like 50, you're crazy. You are out of your mind and that should not be in this position. One of the other pieces is how is a company that has netted multi-million dollar profits increasing at an exponential amount every year begging for money? Why? I don't understand it. I never will. When a company has a profit that goes up, 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 and nothing but down, up, and their stocks go up, 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 why are they asking for more money? When you buy a car, do you not plan to have it oil changed? Do you not plan to buy tires? Why should we, the people, pay for you, the company, to maintain your infrastructure, which should have been planned? Someone had mentioned in a public statistic that one of their CEO's executives got a $400,000 bonus. That can probably replace several streets of pipes, wiring, poles, everything else. Why is the company not investing in their investments? Why are they not fixing, upgrading, improving? I know Unitel did nothing to do that. National Grid did. They offered everyone an in a install of natural gas. Why not? When it happened in Andover that there was an explosion because of overpressurization, 
I was scared for my life because at one point my gas meter outside was leaking. I did the soap bubble test and it was spraying and peeing out liquid everywhere, which meant the gas was leaking and I could smell it. I called and they said, we're too busy right now. Mind you, this was on a Tuesday or Wednesday and it was probably two, three in the afternoon. Why, why? So I called again about an hour later when me and both my dogs vacated the house. I don't feel like passing out and dying because of gas. And they said, oh, we'll send someone out. They came out, they said, oh, nothing's there. I showed him the soap bubble test and he said, okay, well, we'll tighten it and then we'll leave it. That's unacceptable. I don't understand. When a company makes this much money, why can't they be immediate service? When the company makes this much money, why can't they answer questions? When a company makes this much money, what happens to the people who can't type things in and call? They don't have a TTY mode. I train service dogs on the side for any veteran that ever asked. Multiple people I know also have guide dogs. When someone calls in and can't see the phone, what do you do? Their service doesn't understand people's audio responses. Why a year ago before I had a fire at my apartment, did they come in and replace the meter with the smart meters that everyone's talking about? But yet my place, which is built newer more recently and has rusted meters, is not replaced. Where is the money going? And why are they asking for more? There's no reason. And I am highly against this. I don't see why anyone at the utility company, the attorney general's office, at our governor's office, all of our, all of our local polit politicians, from mayor to council at large, and forgive me if I forget any others, have all said, no, this is ridiculous, you're killing us. If this happens, no one's gonna live with heat. And if they do, their pipes are gonna freeze. That causes more damage. I can't afford it. I just bought a house for the first time here a few months ago. There's no reason I should go bankrupt and be homeless because of you, Unitel. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If I could have Anne Marie Scanton. Let me try that one more time. Anne Marie Scanton. Johnny uh, Babinosen. 16 Mount. Haven Way. Sorry, the handwriting. No? Elmer Elbanks. Good evening. Hope you Good evening, me. sir. If you could please state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. All right. Elmer Eubanks, E-U-B-A-N-K-S. Thank you. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes. Thank you, you may proceed. Okay, so I'm here to, in opposition of the increase of your rates for Unitil. And as a resident of Fitchburg, I came, I've been here for seven years almost, and I purchased a house in 2017, which was a nightmare. <laughs> um, but I purchased the house and um, we had to get all the utility changed over, put in new, new power lines, put in new meter readers. So we had three meters put in. Uh, put all that expense, put uh, all LED lights, all new appliances. So when I moved in the first month, my bill was eh, about $48 the first month. The second month, it went up to 180 And from then, it hasn't stopped. I'm up to about $800 a month in utility bills. Um, and I don't use heat. And so I keep fighting with Unitil about that because I don't use ele electric for heat. So. Why am I paying so much for, for my utility bill? So it doesn't make any sense. I try to understand your bill. I compare it to my bill from uh, my uh, uh, apartment in Worcester that I had, my house in Worcester, before here. And I used uh, about the same amount of power. And I'm here in Fitchburg using, getting charged even more. And it's not the fact that it, it's gone up. The and they say, well, the rate's gone up. But I, there's something weird in your bills, in Unitil's bills, that you end up paying even higher rates. So it's not even just the rate issue, it's the issue of how, you're, how is it that you're charging us for the utility bill. It's going up every month. In the summer times, like uh, a previous lady said here today, 
they're not here in the summer. I'm not here in the summer. I'm, uh, and they, the bill does not go down, even with just, I just had the refrigerator running. And they're like, well, you probably have uh, your, uh, your um, uh, what do you call it, re re um, cold, uh, what do you call those? The air, air conditioner. I can't remember air conditioner. Uh, you have your air conditioners running. And I'm like, I'm not at the house, so how, how does my bill not go down? It should go down. I replaced all the, all, the, all the LED lights. They're all LED now. There's no, all new appliances. So there's no reason for the, for the power to be so high. Uh, they came and looked at it, and they're like, well, they're, we don't see anything wrong with your meters. And they go away, and nothing happens. So I'm up to you know, about $2,000 just this, this, uh, this winter in utility bills uh, from December through, through now. Uh, so I, I don't understand it, and I, and I can reasonably compare the bills and look at where their charges are, and I don't see where, where it is that it goes up. So I'm opposed in the, in the increase. I actually think they should reduce the rate, not increase it more. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's what they should be thinking about is reducing the rate. But he, so on top of that, I try to switch over to gas. I had Unitil come over and look at my equipment. They said they would replace my, um, my uh, burner for free. And they came in and decided that they weren't going to replace it, but they still put in the gas line and send me a $6,800 bill. So now I got to pay $6,800 for no gas. It's just totally ridiculous. They're running us out of Fitchburg. I and mean, we're trying to live in this town and be productive. I'm a teacher. I don't make a, you know, I have to add two more jobs in order to pay my, my utility bills. It's ridiculous. So, this has got to stop. We can't afford to live in this city. It's running us out. The businesses are running out of here. The, the, you know, the people are having to leave because they can't afford to live in this town anymore. And it's, it, how come is it that we are the lowest, you know, one of the low, high, you know, lower income areas and we're paying the highest utility bills? It's ridiculous. So hopefully you understand that. I think everybody's brought that up to your attention. But I think you should lower the rate and not give him an increase anymore. That's enough. We've had it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Angel de Jesus. Good evening, sir. Hello. If you could please state your name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Angel de Jesus, D-E-J-E-S-U-S. Um, I'm going to ask you to step a little bit closer to the microphone and just speak up a little bit, okay? Hello. There, that's much better. If you could raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes. Now you may proceed. All right, so pretty much everybody's already said everything that I wanted to say. So what I'm going to say is um, we already pretty much pay for the infrastructure because they charge us for transmission and transition charges in our bill. So not only do we get paid, we got to pay our bill, but they charge us for the transmission of our bill. If I wanted to get a new car, I'm not going to tell Unitel I'm going to drop my bill by $200 a month to buy myself a new car. So that's what they're basically doing to us. They want to upgrade their infrastructure so that they can build more houses, I think. It's not even going to affect me. Is my gas going to burn more efficiently? Am I going to save any more money? Is my bill going to go down after two years from this, in, in, from this increase? <clears throat> that's my question. Um, that's pretty much it. OK, thank you, sir. <laughs> Thomas J. LaCourse. Good evening, sir. Hey, good evening. How are you doing? If you could please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Sure. Thomas LaCourse, L-A-C-O-U-R-S-E. And if possible, could you lift the microphone a little sure. bit closer to you? Thank you. I appreciate that. If you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Hi. Uh, I just want to do, go, oh, due to the fact that I'm the last speaker, uh, all, I'm just hot, warm. Uh, just uh, to totally, totally overwhelmed to the fact that I'm a part of the community. That this is being my first speak in my.
Korea. <laughs> so uh, in, in regards to that, I just wanted to, I, I had it on my radar as far as on my uh, Facebook the last month that it's been, uh, you know, been uh, around that the, this is going to take place. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to call up my uh, elderly people that I, I do their driveways and I'm a part of their lives the last 16 years. I moved from Westford. And I talked to my sister as far as the, uh, the rates and stuff like that. And she has a 2,300 square foot house. And the ratio that takes place with my residents and everybody else behind me, to turn around and have the audacity to have this situation take place and progress to as far as it's been. Uh, I, this might be my first time coming tonight. I knew I had to take it upon myself, even though nine other uh, residents that are elderly uh, couldn't take part for a couple other reasons. I, I think I called them an hour, hour early too, but an hour before coming here, and it didn't work out. And just that I, a big part of my life is I deal with kids uh, in the lower, you know, uh, uh, the, the lower, you know, uh, you know, not in poverty, but like bouncing back and forth and stuff like that. And just to hear the hardships that take place, you know, uh, week in and, and year out, because I've been doing the organization for a, a good period of time, just to, to be in the front lines and to uh, eyewitness and take in the conversations that take place, that I, I take it, a, a, I'm aside, a beside myself because I turn around and I see this take place and you start seeing like the rates go up and a lot of great points of the people behind me have made. And to turn around and have this be at this point in time and not being addressed and getting through somehow, some way. And I guess a lot of it has been addressed because there is some resistance. And just to, just to turn around and be a part of a situation that's going to, you know, better the community to turn around and see it, it done right, uh, it has to take place because it, to turn around and have it go over here, it's just a bar that's going to be uh, superseded just to turn around and have another, uh, you know, marker to overcome in the future that I see from Unitel and the monopoly that takes place because of, from what I've known and the, the other great points that have been taking place tonight, the infrastructure is too old so other companies couldn't come in and start doing that you know, back and forth as far as the, so th there's a leverage that uh, Unitel takes part in d due to the fact that where they are strategically. And uh, I just wanted to turn around and come here tonight and, and, uh, and be a part of the many people behind me that turn around and don't want it to ever happen and don't want to turn around and, and see it happen to people that are, uh, you know, on SSI or don't think it's going to make a change and it's not going to turn around and do anything like Joanne tonight turned around and told me, Tom, I don't think it's going to make a difference if I turn around and come there. And that's from the heart from an uh, 82-year-old lady that has, has, she's a superstar as far as in anybody's standards. And uh, the, there's another one, uh, Marie, that since I've worked, since I've lived in my house for 16 years, she's uh, worked for the convent and uh, helped elderly people and, uh, you know, people that are in poverty and and uh, the real frontline uh, stuff that, uh, you know, takes place day to day. And, you know, she does her, the laundry and she turns around and, uh, you know, certain things that aren't financially, uh, you know, uh, supported, she'll turn, she has to turn around and pay the utilities. And yet she's turning around doing all this. I tell her once in a while, can you rest your wings, Marie? You know what I mean? It's just, it's overwhelming to turn around and see it actually being in front of you and you know you comfort them and you, you do anything and everything you can and uh, I come from Westford so to turn around and come to a, a city that I'm not familiar I'm not familiar with the lifestyle and so on and so forth to turn around and see that wow I'm more closer to the people on two of my streets than people in my whole, whole uh, town of Westford that I used to grow up grew up in you know and uh, this is just the actual factual of the way it, it is taking place you know and it uh, just, it tears me and it tears everybody behind us. And I think for every person in this room has another 10 or 15 people that, that are, are with them and uh, they, need to say, they need to just have it happen where it's intolerable, you know. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Louisa Vadi. Good evening, ma'am. You can lower that if you, if you want, if that's more comfortable. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You if you me? could please um, state your name and spell your last name for the record. Louis Savati, B as in Victor, A as in apple, D as in dog, I as in ice cream. <laughs> if you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes, I do. You may proceed. So Just keep your voice up a little bit, okay? Pretty much like everybody says, you, I touch bases on everything. Um, my January bill alone was $570.91. I'm a mother of four. I am also a school bus driver, so I don't make as much as most people do. And I just can't afford extra on my bill. I sit here, we have brand new windows. I sit here, heat at 60, in the 60s. I, I don't know what else to do. All my lights are energy efficient. I can't afford any more money. <laughs> I really can't, and um, so I'm totally opposed for this increase, and like this other gentleman said, yes, I think we should try to decrease our payments here because we just can't afford it, and, and that's all I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Siobhan Wilson. Siobhan Wilson. Oh, okay. You don't have to rush. It's okay. My apologies. Thank you for showing me how to pronounce your name properly. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's long and ridiculous for no good reason, but thank you. If, if you could please state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Sure. Siobhan Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes, they will be. You may proceed. Um, so I'm Siobhan Wilson. I'm a mom here uh, in Fitchburg. I have four kids. I stay home. We've owned a home for 11 years here. Uh, my husband has worked in the city. We're crazily involved into the city. Uh, we've had Mass Save come in by uh, Unitel's recommendation and um, had our whole house made energy efficient. Sorry. Um, so we do our part. I train my kids to turn off lights. We have all energy efficient everything. Um, we have, you know, the digital thermometer. All, we do our due diligence. And the rates are still astronomical, and I don't understand why they keep going up. And, and I fully want to wholeheartedly say that I'm completely opposed to the, even the idea of raising any of these rates. While we all want to be safe, and we never want to have happen what happened in Andover and Lowell to happen, this is just unacceptable. When Unitil bought, or came into Fitchburg, they bought the infrastructure, right? They have it. It is their responsibility to maintain it. They didn't come into here with their eyes closed. Their eyes were open, and they knew what they were coming into. Just as anyone with responsibilities, you need to figure and factor your accounts out. And it is despicable that even with profits, they're still trying to drain an already empty well to handle their responsibilities. We don't own those infrastructure, they do. If you can have $44 million of profit, I'm pretty sure that you are smart enough, innovative enough, have enough to technology to figure out how to care for that infrastructure without taking from a community that has 60% poverty rate. 60% poverty rate. My husband worked at Goodrich for seven years. It's an alternative high school here. I cannot tell you the number of homeless teenagers in this community. I have housed them on my couch with my four kids because they don't have a place that's safe to live, let alone heat or electricity. It is just despicable that we would even think to take from that so that there could be more profits and better CEO packages and what have you. And I understand business is a business, profit is a profit. $44 million in one year is not a shabby profit. And it's, again, this isn't a, 
surprise liability or surprise responsibility when they bought this infrastructure. Fitchburg's old, newsflash. You knew this coming in here. We have so much technology, so much innovation. There must be a way. Solar panels are not anywhere near the solution. It takes seven years for you to see even a little bit of, of payback in that investment, and that's if you buy them, not lease them. I want to stay here. My kids want to stay here. They've been playing Fitchburg sports forever. We know everyone on our street by name. We're in a nice little nook, and we get a home feeling, and it's beautiful. But I'm done. I'm done. We met with a realtor because I can't afford for these rates to keep going up. I wear, literally, I wear hats in my house. All of my kids wear hoodies all day long because we home educate. I wore gloves the other day and had a blanket to do a grammar lesson with my son. We're doing our part, and my bill was still $380, and it's 1,200 square feet after Mass Save came in and made everything energy efficient. The numbers, the discrepancies that you hear over and over and over, it's not an isolated issue. It is a community full of issues with discrepancies where the numbers, no matter how you do them, do not add up. The only numbers that add up are the profit and the fact that we are in 60% poverty. Those are the only two numbers that are there and they don't, they don't match. And so I am not only opposed to this, kind of appalled that we're even having this conversation again and again and again, I agree with the gentleman beforehand saying we should be fighting for a decrease of rates. The highest in all of Massachusetts? Like, really? It's, it's, just, it's just astronomical and just unnecessary. And again, I wholeheartedly oppose any conversation about increase, whether it's now or in three years or, quite frankly, in five years, because we'll have more technology and more innovation and more ways to solve problems rather than pulling from a well that is completely dry. So thank you all for coming tonight and for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Mike Clark. Zachary Boss. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My last name is B.O.S. I okay. reside at 139 Mount Vernon Street. Thank you. If you could raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may proceed. I understand that the uh, Attorney General's office sent 140 questions to the company that were responded to between the time of their initial filing in December and the time of their settlement. I'd like to know if any of those questions were, how dare you? I've been a resident in Fitchburg since 2018. I've maintained households and paid bills in a half dozen other communities in the Commonwealth. Until I moved to Fitchburg, I never liked getting a bill, but I had never gasped when I got my first bill. Welcome to Unitil country. I'm thinking about opening a small business in Fitchburg. Gotten a lot of enthusiasm from my neighbors, community leaders, elected officials. I ask other small business owners how they're making ends meet. They tell me we're not. I say, what's the issue? Is it the commercial rates? No, it is not. Is it the amount of trade coming in through your front doors? No, that's looking OK. In fact, things are looking up for our community. Consistently, resoundingly, the impediment to business success in this city, I am told, is Unitil's utility rates. I read the settlement. I read the initial filing. In those documents, Unitil explains that they want more money. They don't explain why. They say what they'll use it for. They blow it out in a line budget, capital investments recovery, tax refund recoupment, depreciation offset. That accounting of their budget plans for the increased revenue conveniently excludes executive compensation and shareholder return, which of course all comes out of the same pot. In my book, that's dishonesty by omission. I've sat down with a small business consultant 
going over my revenue projections, my projected bills, see if I can make a go of this plan. He looked at my budget projections and he laughed. He said, buddy, your utilities line is way off. You need to fix this. I said, no, those are the numbers. I wonder how many people aren't in this room tonight because they had to move their household outside of Fitchburg, outside of the area serviced by Unitil. I wonder how many businesses have closed in this city because their revenue couldn't get over the insurmountable, usurious obstacle of Unitil. I wonder how many businesses have never opened here because of Unitil. I have to address Unitil, and I hope that some of those questions asked by the department and by the AGO included these questions. If your rates are literally putting customers out of business or chasing them away, do you think you're good at business? If you don't know how to leverage innovation, operational efficiency, technology, or consolidation to deliver your service to customers at a fair cost, do you think you're good at business? Unitel had a choice. Instead of saying to their team, to their officers, to their shareholders, we need to do better. We need to lower costs. We need to return less profit. Profit, but less profit to our shareholders. They didn't make that choice. Instead, they decided to take the path of least resistance, which is what they think the people in this room are. They decided to file with the DPU in order to seek state permission to enhance their monopoly and squeeze more blood from a stone and raise the rates on their customers. Now that's not bad business. That's called a shakedown. I'm asking the DPU to deny any rate increase on electric or gas rates which impact Fitchburg and to remind us that that's what responsible utility regulation looks like. In this case, that would mean the DPU tells Unitil to get better at business, to stop reaching into a cu its customers' pockets. If the DPU won't provide a remedy, I will have to expect our elected officials to make this a priority. I heard someone mention municipal control. Sounds like a good option to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Scott Janford. Good evening, sir. Good evening. If you could please state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. My name is Scott Sanford, S-A-N-F-O-R-D. Um, you raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? I do. You may proceed. Thank you. Um, I would like to address uh, something that um, has been kind of touched on. The fact that Fitchburg ranks 340 out of 351 is kind of shocking. One of the reasons why a city like this is going to continue to be pushed down and oppressed is from what I would consider to be parasitic behavior. And a parasite is an organ that lives in or feeds off of its host. And I think Unitel is a perfect example of a parasite. Now, I can back that with facts. Uh, I have in front of me a bill from Unitil for a 30,000 square foot building in Fitchburg for $10,000 for electricity. $10,000. I have a comparable business in Acton. When you scale the square footage of that business, which does the exact same thing, it's 55 hundred dollars. So you ask, how do I come to the term parasite? How do you expect to employ people that are already oppressed when a company that's in business in Fitchburg has a 50 percent competitive disadvantage with utilities compared to that of a town that is number 10 in affluence in the state? 
it can't be done. I can also cite for you, I have several friends that own restaurants. I have one in particular who has a business in Lunenburg and in Acton. His utility bill is twice what his real estate bill is, making it impossible for him to increase staff. It's absolutely inconceivable that you would request a utility rate increase when you've got rates that are literally double anywhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Matt Cohen. Good evening, sir. Matthew Cohen, C-O-H-E-N. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the statement you're about to give will be the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may proceed. So I heard some other people thanking you for having this meeting tonight. I'm certainly not going to do that because you're legally obligated to. Uh, under the section of law legally obligating the hearing, it also specifies that the metric that you're supposed to be using to decide if this increase happens is the propriety of it which I happen to have the definition of, which is the state or quality of conforming to conventionally accepted standards, <sighs> sorry, not good at public speaking, of behavior or morals. <laughs> so the decision you come to after this hearing will speak tales about your own personal morals. Although to be honest, I think if any of us expect this hearing to have any effect, is giving you a little too much credit. Thank you. Matt, um, and I apologize, I can't read your handwriting here. Um, Brad? It looks like B-R-A-L-H. Okay, Mary Helene? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. If you could state your name and spell your last name for the record. Mary Helene, H-E-L-I-N-E. -E. Please raise your right hand. H-E-L-I-N-E. -E. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make will be the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may proceed. All right. So um, I'm a young homeowner and a lifelong Fitchburg resident, and I do not qualify for any subsidies, and I pay my taxes and my unit bill. I serve on the city's conservation commission and I frequent the local economy here. Growing up, we were never really warm in the winter and, you know, put on an extra sweater, put on your fuzzy slippers. That's the norm in Fitchburg. Um, my heat does not go above 62. Um, I throw on a blanket. So, um, my point here is that I love Fitchburg. I love my community, and the only reason why I would sell my home would be because of Unitil. And furthermore, if I were to sell my home as a tax-paying citizen, it would be out of Massachusetts completely, because at this point, I feel very let down that this is like such an atrocity that hasn't been recognized whatsoever. Um, so, you know, mainly it comes down to profit, right? And I think we all know that, you know, with the, the, uh, you know, what the CEOs are making, what the VPs are making, it's just an insane salary. And it's basically saying that their time is intrinsically worth much more than my time. I am gone from sunup to sundown working. And for me to come home to a, like a $500 unit till bill is asinine. You're making $5 million or plus whatever it is a year. Um, there's no reason why that should be on our backs, so, you know, an everyday, normal, middle-class American. And quite frankly, in Fitchburg, we have bigger issues than that. I can at least afford my bill, but there are so many issues, and my heart just goes out for those folks as well. 
Thank you, ma'am. Mary Jo Bohart. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. If you could please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Yes, Mary Jo Bohart, B-O-H-A-R-T. And if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? I do. Thank you, you may proceed. Thank you. My role with the City of Fitchburg as a city staff person is Economic Development Director. And what that entails is the city staff person dealing solely with the commercial sector, the business community. It's both a combination of existing businesses and the prospective businesses we're seeking to recruit here. So it's a little bit of both. I also am uh, the person that's charged, or part of the, the lead group that's charged with filling vacant spaces. So you can imagine the challenges for a city like Fitchburg, um, where in different parts of our city we still have a fair bit of vacancy, commercial vacancy. And what we're trying to do is take advantage of whatever competitive edge we might be able to muster relative to other locations where businesses can go instead. We have a lot of unique assets and we actually have a fair number of businesses that look into locating here. But it isn't long after they start to talk to their peers within whatever sector or type of business they are, some of the existing businesses that are already here, when they start to worry about the unusually high electricity and other utility, you know, the gas and electricity rates that a city like Fitchburg, a Unitil city, experiences. And so it isn't the only factor, but it's certainly a very significant one that puts us at a disadvantage. Fortunately, we persevere and we do have businesses that come, but we also have businesses that leave. Another interesting insight that I've had um, the opportunity uh, to, to talk with folks, and you've heard a few from the audience mention, when a business has more than one location, and we have a few of them that, that I know and sub, uh, others in the audience know of them too, and one of their locations is here in Fitchburg and one is in another community which is not served by Unitil. Those types of businesses can compare their two different locations, whether it's a restaurant or whatever type of business they may be. Those direct comparisons are real. And so sometimes you wonder if um, that disparity of, of rates and, 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 and expense to a business is, is, is a figment of their imagination or an urban legend or whatever. But there, it's actually quite significant. So I, I would hope that DPU, as the state agency considering this rate increase, or even the Unitil leadership, would think long and hard about how their utility rates are actually hampering Fitchburg's ongoing economic development efforts as we continue to improve our economy and um, struggle against whatever um, hurdles we've got and the utility rates are not doing us any favors. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any additional members of the public who would like to be heard? Please step forward, sir. I'll ask for you to raise your hand again when he finishes, okay? Thank you. And over here as well? Okay, thank you. If you could please state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. My name is Will Seagard, S-E-A-G-A-A-R-D, and um, I'm a, a property manager. If I could just pause yep. you, if you could yeah, just, yeah. yeah, sorry, no, if you could just raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Okay, I you do. may proceed now. Thank you. Um, so I'm a property manager and business owner here, and I really, I just don't get it. Um, with your corporate tax decreasing 14% over the last year, I get that your profits would go up as a result of that, but you have a monopoly right now. You can't argue anything else. And to then push that off to the consumer, that's illegal in the US. It's supposed to be at least. Um, 
their main argument being that, hey, we're smaller, so we have to pay more for, for gas and oil to generate electricity. That's being pushed off to the consumer already. Why are your distribution rates then going up as well? It makes no sense. What was your top line revenues over the last year? Can you guys answer that for me? Sir, this, this is just an opportunity okay, for okay. you to provide comment. Um, so really, for me, I mean, I, I am just going to reiterate what everyone's been saying. Mary Jo pretty concisely stated it. It's a huge negative pressure on businesses trying to come in here when we cannot compete with businesses that are not served by Unitil just in Massachusetts. If we have to compete on a national level, we have no chance. And there are a lot of positive qualities about Fitchburg, but that is not one of them. And I hope it changes because it has to or things are only going to go down. Um, and so those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The man in the gray sweatshirt. I'll get you next and then we'll go over there, okay? Okay. I'll try to remember all of that, but please remind me. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. If you could state your name and spell your last name for the record, please. Brandon Graves, G-R-A-V-E-S. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes. You may proceed. Thank you. So the one thing that is obviously overwhelming, we've heard numbers, we've heard statistics back and forth. Recently, Massachusetts just, and they're considering raising it even more, is the overall wages uh, and our basic rate of pay to more uh, on the hourly rate to, to equal what is throughout our country. You're hearing how poor Fitchburg is, how, how much we struggle, uh, and we're just now getting an opportunity to make what other, country, uh, other states make and other counties make in our own state to, to try to grow as a community. And the money that they're giving us during this minimum wage raise and everything, they're trying to take back. We're just trying to get even, be on an even playing field with other people, in a sense. And that little bit of money that we got in our minimum uh, wage uh, increase is now going to have to be paid over because they want to increase their rates. That's ridiculous. No one's going to be able to survive. You've already heard multiple people talk about businesses. I'm one of the few residents that's lived here since 1979. And I've watched all these businesses leave. I watched my father lose jobs. I grew up, uh, I grew up in a household that struggled. My, my family and parts of my family are on a fixed income. I'm luckily in a place where I'm not there, but if they continue to do this, I will be right there as well. We, we can't allow them to run this monopoly and, and gouge, as, as it was said earlier, take blood from a stone it's, it's impossible. That's all. Thank, Thank you, sir. Look at the gentleman in the black right there. Yep. Good evening, sir. Um, good evening. My name is Ronnie Hinao, G-E-N-A-O. If you could please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes. You may proceed. Thank you. So I've been, I'm a homeowner for almost three years now. And uh, my wife and I have been recently speaking because of our bills going up. And the conversation is, we need to do something about it. We need to do something about it because if we keep the heat so low, our kids are going to get sick. And what I'm seeing today is a monopoly effect. We're a domino effect, where Unitel places all the dominoes on the table, and you guys have the decision to say it is not happening this time. So 
Unitel is forcing either the father or the mother to get a second job just to make it through the winter. Just to make it through the winter. How is that fair for the kids that are now losing a parent, that are not being supervised by both parents? What's going to happen with these children? What's going to happen with this kid? How bitter is he going to be? What's going to happen within his heart? Is he going to turn to crime? Which is what happens when a father or a mother is lost because of the excessive workload that they have to cover now the bills? You guys have the decision to remove that domino from Unitel and say, not today. Not today because what happens today will determine what happens to my kids in the future. It will determine whether they are going to be successful because I was there to mentor them and guide them. Or I wasn't there because I was too busy working two jobs in order to put heat in my home so they could be comfortable. How is that fair to anybody here? How is it fair that when they make $40 million a year, they cannot put aside 20% to invest in their infrastructure? Is that upon us? When McDonald's wants to build a new place, do they raise their prices on us? Or do they, put, they take it out of their budget and do it? So it is your job to remove that domino and stop this today. And not just today, for the times to come. For this will not end here. I know they're going to try this again. Regardless of what you guys do, they're going to try it again and again and again. Because they're going to squeeze Fitchburg so there is no more Jews left. That is your job to look after the future of our kids. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. If I could have the gentleman over there, please. Excuse Good me. evening, sir. Good evening. Can if you, you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. If you could state Thank your you. name and spell your last name for the record, please. Yeah, I think you, uh, I, my handwriting, I got neuropathy. I signed that. Oh. You called me Johnny, and it was Jerry, and I didn't know that was me. Uh, Gerard Babin, 16 Mountain Lower Lane, Fishburg here. Sorry, can you hear you me? Spell the last name, please. My last name is B-A-B-I-N-E-A-U. And if you could raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Oh, they're going to be the truth, yes. You may proceed, sir. Thank you. Yes, they're going to be the truth. Um, I am one of those eldest citizens. I'm in my mid-70s, okay, that uh, on a fixed pension that we've been talking about. So I'm one of the faces of Fitchburg that is being affected by this. I have no idea why, why we are raising rates. I look at this so-called solution what the attorney general of highway robbery by raising the rates instead of lowering the rates I, um, this meeting actually is allowing me to keep my thermostat at 58 for another three hours <laughs> you know so there is a positive to it my day is when i get up I'll go sit in a coffee shop to keep warm for a couple hours because I have a bottomless cup of coffee. And then by that time, the library's open. So I'll go hang out in the library using their computers for a couple hours. Then I'll go to the senior center. And then I'll probably either go to Planet Fitness, is only 10 bucks a month for a couple hours. And, but I have severe arthritis, so I can't do too much. Or I'll go sit and Bonds and Nobles and read because I don't want to go home before five, six o'clock. And if I, I am able uh, to take a walk, I bundle up because I have severe arthritis. And if I go home, I don't unbundle because my home is just as cold as it is outside. You know, in order to save. So my November bill was double my October bill. So once again, I call Unitil, and I find out that I actually only use one quarter, or a little more one quarter, to be honest, but under a third 
of that bill, of the usage on that bill. So I asked the person I was speaking to, all right, how do you compute the charges and the fees? No answer. They had no answer. They had no idea how to compute the charges and the fees. You know, you guys guesstimate, guesstimate, guesstimate. That's the way I look at it. You know, uh, Unitil is causing real suffering in this community. Make no, that is a true statement. Okay, they are causing real suffering in this community. And uh, you're making major profits. I've spoken to senators, state senators, people that represent representatives, that you are spending millions of dollars on lobbyists, lawyers to keep other utility companies from entering, and big bonuses for your executives. That's where the money's going. And that's, I'm getting that from people that are representing us. My dad was 87 years old. My mom had passed away. My dad was by himself, okay? Bundled up, his heat's on 55. He's got a logs going in a fireplace. The heat in the house is still 55. He is, we called him until the bill was $750. $750, and they just blew us off. If you don't pay it, we're gonna shut off the electricity. That was their answer. That was your answer. That's how you treat senior citizens in Fitchburg. And somebody mentioned the ice storm. I was gone for the ice storm. It was my highest bill. All right, my highest bill. So I said, you had to guesstimate. No, he didn't guesstimate. I'm talking to a manager in Concord, and he's emailing me. I have 21 emails that I gave to Mayor Wong. And she put me down as part of the lawsuit, which I didn't get a penny of, but anyways, she took the 21 emails in which some manager in Concord over and over and over said, we did not guesstimate for the ice storm. And then finally I called him and I said, you know, it was on the front page of the Fitchburg Sentinel that you guesstimated for the ice storm. So you were lying all this time. And he had the gumption to tell me, no, I wasn't. So he lied upon the lies. I said, well, I'll send you a, I'll send you a Sentinel so you can read it. You know, and every time you ask you until you call them up, for example, I spent over $3,000 insulating my place, not a penny changed in the bill, okay, not one cent, all right? I asked them to come in, MassSave doesn't come into condos, I'm one person, I have one light on wherever I am, all right? So I'll say, oh, your refrigerator, refrigerators are constant, people, Whoever answers your phones can't get that concept in their mind. For some reason, my electric bill is the highest in August, and I'm never home in August like other people have spoken about. You know, I'm not home. You know, the water heater's turned off. Everything's turned off. You know, where is the bill coming from? You know, so my feeling is that you lie and you cheat. Okay, and now you want to raise rates on top of that and cause more suffering in this community. I think that is just deplorable. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ma'am, I'll get to you next, sir. So we'll have you and then you and then you, okay? Yeah. Oh, just, do you want to send, he can go first. It's up to you, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jordan LeBlanc, L-E-B, Jordan LeBlanc, L-E-B-L-A-N-C. If you could raise your right, thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, you may proceed. Jordan. So I don't really have a lot to say because I wasn't planning on coming up here. Um, but after hearing all the statistics and 
all of the stories. I couldn't sit here and not share my family's story as well and kind of plead with you guys um, to deny the request for an increase on Unitel's behalf. My grandfather's unoccupied Fitchburg home has been on the market since August. The unoccupied home that my family has been trying to sell has had many offers. It's a beautiful home. Every single one of those offers have been redacted due to the high cost of utilities put on there by Unitel. The bill in January was over $300. For what? It's unoccupied. We've turned the heat down to 47 degrees, just enough to ensure that the pipes don't freeze. And we've unplugged everything, including the fridge, and the home is still racking up a bill of over $300 a month. Kind of to wrap this up, I guess, is, um, and to add to it, my family is a family of three, and we live in a relatively small three-bedroom home in Fitchburg. I've been living in Fitchburg for over 26 years, and we all work very hard full-time jobs. We walk around our home wrapped in blankets, sweatshirts, hats, as you've heard many other people say that they do as well, only to barely be able to afford our utility bill monthly. Now, I'm not looking for a pity party, as I'm sure that there are people who are much worse off. I work in the Fitchburg public school system, and I, I work in the second grade classroom. I could not and don't want to imagine that my students are living in any similar or worse conditions than I have lived in my 26 years. So, you know, I hate to be that guy, and I don't want to throw a Miss America pageant answer at you, but really, like, Think of the children. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Sir, I'll get to you next, OK? I apologize about your name, sir. Totally fine. If you could spell it for me for the record. B as in boy, I as in I, I. D, L, E, M, A, N. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the statement you're about to make is the truth? Yes, it is. You may proceed, sir. Wow. Matt, thank you. All right, so, um, yeah, I've been a long-time sufferer, first-time speaker. Um, basically, I've been doing, uh, uh, sitting in front of me right now is a bill for uh, $431.06. It's a monthly bill. It's tough. You know, I don't make a ton of money, whatever. The but I was looking, I was listening to a lot of people's stories. It's quite awful the way people suffer. And um, I was looking at definitions in my phone. Now, I'm an electrician, so I know your power poles carry 13,800 volts. Go to a transformer, the transformer distributes it to each house, bucks are boosted down according to the amount of energy consumption they use. Now, when I look at the transmission charges, the definition is charges assessed by your local utility company on your bill for the cost of moving high voltage electricity from the facilities that generate the electricity through the distribution lines of the electric distribution company. Okay? Now, that's the transmission bill is my second highest bill, which comes directly from the Unitel. Okay? I mean, that's, that's a side, that's like a personal charge, like a slap to the face, you know? But then I look at the distribution charge. For the use of local wires, transformers, substations, and other equipment used to deliver electricity to end use customer, consumers from high voltage transmission lines. Okay? And it sounds like a lot, and it is, but the point of the matter is, what's the difference? Okay? Those are the most biggest parts of my bill. They go up constantly. It's unbelievable. And I look out, I've been in Fitchburg for 30 years, 40 years, sorry. I, I'd like to be younger, but I look up and I can see, I, I've seen transformers in front of my house for 25 years they last. Are you kidding me? And then I drive up Ashby State Road when there was just 
just the power line came down and I noticed, which is still on Ashby State Road, a, a tree sitting on top of the high voltage 13,800 volt lines. It's sitting on top of it right now. Now, if I go to somebody's house and wire something and somebody gets hurt or something happens, I'm found negligent. My company is, my company could get be in trouble. You know, point of the matter is, that's been sitting over there and you know unsafe things have been going on and it's like do I sue Unitil every time something goes wrong what is this you know what I mean you're supposed to be taking care of the distribution lines you're supposed to be taking care of the transformers things like that and these things are lasting 30 years yet we're getting charged a delivery charge and we're getting charged maintenance charges on things that haven't been maintained and aren't maintained things are going up we're the highest in the I mean we're one of the highest places I've heard it said we're one of the highest places in the country a lot of facts are coming to my attention that I had no idea about but I mean the point of the matter is is that I pay half my I it's awful you know I saved to get a house it's not awful it's it, you know but I'm paying half my rent in electricity and yeah this is the warmest I've been in months and you know what? It's good in here. If I had a cot, I'd be sleeping right here. But the, the point of the matter is, is that I'm cold. I'm cold in the winter. I'm hot in the, hot in the summer. I can't do anything, you know? And, and, and it's like, it, it's just to raise it again to something that's already astronomical, something that's unbelievable, to raise it again would just be, I mean, I, th I think it's robbery. And the thing is, is when my bill goes up even one dollar, and this is the way a lot of companies pull it, because I've seen it from all kinds of companies. Oh, we'll charge you an extra dollar or something. And Unitil, believe it or not, it isn't an exact bill you're getting because it isn't a meter reading. It's an estimated bill. And, and yeah, it is. And so, but the point of the matter is, is that if my bill goes up a dollar, it's no big deal. But try doing that to. 10 million people. Try doing that to a million people. You know? I mean, the point of the matter is, is somebody's pocket's getting greased. And I'm a Christian and it's tough, you know, it, it, it gets tough when I see my bell. But I still maintain. It's pretty good. But I mean, whoever's pocket's getting greased, I hope they got that 3 million SPF sunblock for where they're headed. But that's none of my business and I can't judge. But I really appreciate you listening. I appreciate everything. Um, I truly am wicked against this, but I had to speak. I had to come down and say something. I mean, what the heck? I get that. I get this letter in the mail, and it's like, what? You know? I mean, we can't ask questions, can't do nothing, but point out things. And yeah, I want to give a sad story, and it's awful, and I, I'd love to because I got 10 million of them. But I mean, you know, I don't know who I'm talking to. I, I honestly don't know anything about you guys. I don't know, and I, I don't mean to sound rude. I don't know anything about anybody here. I don't know who's in whose pocket. I don't know what's going on, but I know the way the system works, basically, is what it is. And I know that we've been getting ripped off for quite a long time. And I thank you for listening. Uh, have a great night. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. If you could please state your name, your full name, and spell your last name for the record. Okay. My name is Naeem Ahmed. Uh, last name is A H M. First name is Naeem, N A E E M. Last name is A H M A D. N A H M, M for Mike, A D. <clears throat> if you could raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you are about to make are the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. I have no doubts about that a Fitchburg a Unital is definitely bankrupting the Fitchburg city. The reason I'm saying I came in 1983 in Fitchburg. At that time, I remember clearly, Fitchburg used to be called a, ma a capital of manufacturing. Where all those manufacturers, they all gone, they left Fitchburg. The last company, the company I want to give you example, which I worked for 34, 34 years almost, and they closed. Simon Industries in Fitchburg, right here. 189-year-old company, uh, 
and their CEO or their president, uh, what a few years ago, he mentioned that he was paying 15 cent kilowatt per hour. I don't know how this nominally should go, but 15 cent kilowatt, he said. He said he has some other uh, plants in, around the country. And he said he was paying like a nine cent, eight cent. So that was a dilemma for them because this place was loaded with the furnaces. There was a heavily used all, uh, both gas and electric. So they end up buying generator, but the generator for some reason, uh, to the maintenance and other thing will get involved, and the generator kind of failed. And finally they left the Fitchburg. They couldn't afford the unital bills. Uh, there are a lot of things already uh, gentlemen and uh, ladies mentioned, I don't want to repeat it, but I just want to have a simple comparison, uh, which is in, right in the Massachusetts, a couple of it around the, uh, some other states. I have some, uh, my brother-in-law says, one is an A1, uh, Bridgewater, and, uh, and the Norton. They are uh, small towns. Uh, the other utility company, I don't know how they are, half of the price they pay what would compare to Fitchburg. My last two bills was 752 and $765 in the last two months. And this is a fairly a warm winter. I, I just don't understand why this bill. And this, this bill, uh, in the A1, this is 6,000 square feet house. And he's paying $352, gas and electric. And then A1, he paid $275. And then I have sister, she lives right outside the Herdon, uh, Dallas airport. And this is a very highly, I mean, uh, metropolitan area. And she used her uh, like a uh, probably 8,000 square feet house. And they're paying, their bill never exceeded more than $300. California, now this is, a, they have a, all the other uh, uh, issues, but the power, I still understand why they are still half of the pr uh, price they pay, but we pay in right here in Fitchburg. So Unitel is definitely bankrupting the Fitchburg. I think they are robbing it blindly. Thank you, Thank you sir. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. Hi there. If you could please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Yes, Amy Green, G-R-E-E-N. If you could raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to give are the truth? Yes. You may proceed. Um, as a Fitchburg City Councilor, we have worked diligently to take away the stigma of all the negative things that happen in Fitchburg, and we still repeatedly hear that one of our barriers is Unitil as our electric and gas provider. I would like to just point out that the one thing that I don't think anybody has talked about is the business of business and the fact that we know that 44 percent of our population here in Fitchburg is underprivileged and underserved and that 44 percent also repeatedly does not pay their u utility bill. So I would employ you to please look at the business of having repeat offenders who continue not to pay their bill. And if you don't want that number to increase more than 44%, that something has to be done because you have heard passionately our residents of Fitchburg who are not going to be able to pay their utility bill. And that number is going to end up continuing to bite you in the bottom if you choose to do nothing about it, that 44% is going to end up at 70% before you know it, and then you will have no recourse because you can't pinch us any more than what, is, than what we feel like we're being pinched. So I don't know what the business model is on repeat properties or repeat people who do not pay their bill, but I, as well as everybody else in this room, don't want to continue to pay for the people who aren't paying. You owe it to the people who are paying to be responsible to them to make it so that we can afford to continue to live here, own and operate businesses that we try every day to make succeed. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
Good evening. Good if evening. You could please state your name clearly first and last and spell your last name for the record. My name is Maria Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. And if you could raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make were the truth? Yes. You may, you may proceed. Thank you, ma'am. So just following Ms. Green there, I live in Fitchburg, I work in Fitchburg, and I do not receive any subsidies whatsoever. I'm a veteran just like this young man is over here. And this happened to me just in the, since last week to this week. So last week, my, my utility got shut off. So I called Unitil, they, the lady was kind enough, she had it put back on. She said, oh, you have to pay this certain amount and get on a payment plan and you should be set. Let me talk to my credit department. Next day she called, I missed her call, called her back. Next woman I spoke to said, oh, we're sorry, the credit department denied you. Mind you, I've never missed a payment, never. I have a budgeted amount per month, but when my uh, winter bill got high last, last year, I got on the payment plan, never missed a payment. When that time frame was over, I had an, a little surplus, plus what my budget covered the month of November. December came, my bill was 400 plus. January came, my bill was 500 plus. So I, they shut it off, even though I'm still making my budgeted allotment payments that go directly to them, from my bank to their bank, whatever it may be. So the second woman I spoke to said, nope, they denied you. Unfortunately, we can't do it unless you pay this amount, which was higher than the first lady spoke of. By then it was Friday. She said she was going to send me a um, form for hardship, okay? I work every single day of the week. I work overtime if I have to. I don't, again, don't receive any subsidies. My temperature in my home is like everybody else, stays at 62 degrees. No higher, no changes. I'm not home most of the time because I'm working. Why? Because I need to pay Unitel, along with my mortgage and my other bills. So. Monday morning came, called Unitil again, spoke to a different individual. So at this point, I've spoken to Jessica, Kyra, and Ray, okay? So Ray says, hey, why don't you try these other entities to try to help you? Mock, the Salvation Army, the United Way, Catholic Charities, uh, the Attorney General's Office, and the Public Works Department. Well, guess what? Only the Catholic Charities returned my call. I spoke to someone at the Attorney General who told me to call and speak to Public Works. Public Works told me, if nobody can help you, give us a call back. I've called the Public Works twice. Nobody called me back. Call Mock, nobody called me back. Now, the lady at Catholic Charities told me, well, we can help you only if Unitil is willing to help you to make a plan, a budget. I understand my responsibility. I work hard. I'm willing to pay my bill. There's no denying it. I want a budget plan. I don't mind the budget plan. That was my first statement when I spoke to the, spoke to the first lady named Kira. So we sat in her office. She called Unitil. And the gentleman said, no, nope, we can't help you unless you pay 800 plus dollars, and then we can put you on the budget plan. So we went from $310 to, two, $310 to $435 to $800. You don't want my money, but yet you want to increase my price, the price. I'm willing to work with you. And I'm sure many other people in Fitchburg are willing to work with you, but you're making it so difficult so, so difficult, because you want to raise the, and oh, not only this, but just so you're aware, not everybody just has only electric, and not only everybody has gas, because in my house, I have both. So you're sucking me dry two times. On top of the fact that you don't want to take my money, and I want to be responsible about paying, and nobody wants to take my money. Yet, you're willing to raise my price, 
Now I have a 15 day grace period, not getting any help from anybody. I'm trying to make a payment, but nobody wants my money because even if I give it to you, you're still gonna cut me off. So what's the point of me giving you my money in lieu of sacrificing my mortgage or my water bill or my insurance or whatever else I have to pay because you don't want to work with me. You don't want to work with me. That doesn't, that's not okay. And then on top of that, you want to rake me over the coals by increasing it again. Not fair, not okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. If you could please state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Thais, T-H-A-I-S, Stoikov, S-T-O-I-C-O-W. If you could raise your, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? I do. You may proceed. I have in front of me here a bill that is $1,088.50, 60 cents, pardon me. And uh, just like everybody else here, you know, I've heard statistics, I've heard sob stories, so I'll bring one more. I have three kids, one more on the way. I work full time. My husband is not working due to injury, has been out of work since September of last year. And I called Unitil, I set up a payment, pl payment plan and uh, they told me, uh, what do you leave your heat on? I, I'm gone for most of the day. My kids are at home with my husband who's not working. And my heat is at 65, 62. And from what I've heard here, that's, that's a luxury. And we're cold. We're very cold. And I'm actually appalled that I'm here to, I, I had no idea what this was all about. I just got an email saying uh, from the board members, because I'm a new homeowner. I moved from Lowell to Fitchburg in August. And uh, I'm just shocked to be here to be discussing a rate increase. I thought I was here to dec uh, discuss a decrease because I don't know how you can justify having a bill two months worth $1,088.60, and we're here to discuss an increase? That seems immoral to me, to charge people that much money, especially when we're, we're, we have sweaters and blankets at home. We're not living in a, cold, in, a, in a comfortable environment right now, and not to mention the hardships with, you know, which seems to be the case with just about everybody else here in Fitchburg. But what I want to say is that uh, two things that should be taken into consideration. Uh, who we vote for, because it seems to me, I, I'm not sure how a house that's not being occupied, a bill is upwards of $300 a month. That sounds to me like there should be an investigation for that. $300, $400, outrageous rates, they're not there. Why is it so much? Why are we discussing an increase when there should be an investigation as to why this is happening to these people? I, you know, I, I'm there. It's, it's a townhouse. It's not even 1,200 square feet, over $1,000 in electric and, and heat, because it's both ways. And uh, consider also who we vote for, because I'm not sure uh, the gentleman here rep representing the uh, Attorney Gen General, I wasn't sure uh, whose side you guys were on from reading. I was hearing your numbers and the person sitting behind me, well, my letter said that I, my bill is going to increase about $50 a month, 50 to 80. So consider who y you people vote for because obviously something is not working and honestly, I, I just bought this house, first time home buyer, and I'm scared, I'm terrified because apparently this has been going on for years now. And this is my first time here, like I said, completely unaware that I'm here to discuss an increase. I thought, you know, wow, 
this bill is so high, of course we're going to be discussing a, a decrease. And come to find out, you guys are trying to raise the rates that are outrageously high as, as it is. So do I plan on staying in Fitchburg? Probably not. And I would argue Massachusetts. You know, I, I was uh, serviced by National Grid and I, I don't remember paying 80, over $80 a month in elect electricity and now I'm paying over 1000 And so these are my arguments that uh, there should be an investigation as to why people are being charged this much money. I could justify because we're there, you know, I, even if I'm not home, my kids are home, so I don't know seems a bit excessive that the bill would be this high, but then we've also heard stories here, unoccupied properties being that much, and, and uh, the senior citizen here saying that he spends all his time away from home and, and you know the heat is on 40-something, on and he's still paying an absurd amount, and uh, it just seems unreasonable. It just seems very strange. I called Unitil, and they, they I, I don't get any help from the government, no subsidies, nothing. And here they are telling me, oh, reach out to uh, Mass Save, they'll help you, and, and I've done that, been there, done that, changed uh, the thermostat to a Nest thermostat, changed the light bulbs, you name it, I've done it. No help, it just keeps going up and up every month. And uh, I just don't understand why it's this high, why nothing is being done in terms of legislature. I would love to see the same diligence, you know, towards this not being a monopoly. If, if uh, I don't know why uh, Unitil is trying to increase, especially on the guise of, you know, $44 million revenues or billions, I can't remember. But why is it a monopoly? Why can't we get service from National Grid or some other provider? I don't understand. And frozen pipes is, is, is an issue too. And, and these people, you know, they barely have their heat on and, and the, the, their electric and heating bills are astronomical. So I, I would argue that we should be here not for an increase, but we should be discuss discussing a decrease and consider who everyone votes for because obviously, you know, this isn't working for us and it keeps reoccurring. So I don't know that I'm going to stay in Fitchburg because if this is an issue every year and we're here every year trying to get more and more increases, it's uh, terrifying to stay and, and think of what about our future? What about my children? You know, if, if I have a heating and electric bill that's this high, and, and my husband right now is not working. It's, it's just ridiculous. Even if he was, it doesn't justify it being this high and much less, you know, in a house that is not being occupied and how you can justify charging that much. And we're here to discuss an increase. It's just ridiculous. And I, I hope that's taken into consideration, but also, you know, to say how immoral this is, and apparently this is done every year. And that's scary to me. That's uh, scary to know that this is what I'm keep coming into as being a first time homeowner. I did not anticipate going through this. If I had known, I would have certainly not purchased a home in Fitchburg. That is all. Thank you, ma'am. I believe we'll have two more speakers tonight. We'll end on you, sir. Uh, my if name you is, could oh, please, sorry, yeah. state your name and spell your last name for the record. Chris Hill, H-I-L-L. -L. Thank you, if you could, thank you. Um, do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make are the truth? I do. Thank you, you may proceed. All right, so I bought my house in 2016. I had a gas leak as soon as I bought the house. I called Unitil up. They if you came could just in. speak up a little bit, no, please. Sorry, thank you so up. much. Mm -hmm. I bought my house in 2016. I had a gas leak as soon as I bought the house. I called Unitil up. They came in. I said, I'm outside next to my uh, sidewalk, I can smell gas. They came, they couldn't really detect it outside too much. I said, well, let's, let's check inside your house. 
they had a small leak next to the meter. So okay, they fixed that. We went outside and like, I still can smell it. They're like, well, we can't really smell it, out, or we can't detect it, whatever. Called them back a couple weeks later, same thing, still can't detect it. Two weeks ago, I see someone drilling in my yard. I'm like, well, what's going on? I have cameras, I can talk to people. I wasn't home, I was at work. He's drilling my yard. Well, we have a gas leak. We're losing a lot of gas up this way. And we found the gas leaks right in front of your house, right where I said it was four years ago. This company wants to take more money from us when they knew the gas leak was there. You know, the, when I explained, you know, I told him where it was, the guy even said to himself, well, I can smell it, but I can't detect it. You know, if they want more money, they should fix the infrastructure. You know, $44 million, take that. You go hire, you know, a contractor for one year. Fix everything. Get rid of your $44 million profit for the year. And now you're gonna make more money year after year. And you're not gonna charge us more money out of our own pockets. Um, also, while they were there um, four years ago, or, um, when I bought my house, they were supposed to replace my meter. During that time I had the leak, they're like, oh, we're gonna send someone out in two, two weeks. They never did. When they had this gas leak a couple weeks ago, they're like, well, we're here now. I said, can you change my meter? They're like, let's look at it. They look at it like, oh, wow, you know, that's really old. I forgot what he said. I think he said it's about 50 years old or something like that. It was, it was pretty old. So they replace it. They come in, they bring, they bring a, a backhoe tractor over my stone wall, ruin my stone wall. They claim they're, they're going to fix it. They're not yet. They said in, in, in the fall. But they also, they come in and they put the new meter on the side of my house. Looks good. Besides, they spray painted my vinyl you know, wall. So this is the company that's asking for more, more money. When they come in and they spray paint the meter, they can't spray paint it on the side, you know, the pipe, before they put it all in. No, they spray paint it and now the side of my house is gray. I have a yellow house. You look at the side of my house, it looks like it's dirty, but you try to go to rub it off, you can't. And this is the same company that's asking for a raise. The other part of my, my thing that why I'm up here, you know, they're asking for a big raise in hopes that we settle for something small. And they really, that's what they want. They want the small raise. They don't want the big raise. They, no, they, well, their hopes is to put a big raise out there and then we all feel happy that it's a low, low raise. The thing is, they don't deserve no raise. They want more of a raise. You know, lower um, uh, the, 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 the wasted gas. Lower that. Go out there and just fix it all right now. And there's plenty of people out there that can just, you know, you hire them as a contractor for one year and you just fix everything. Now you're not blowing gas out the door, like at, right in front of my house for four years, you know, just blowing out the door. There's your profit. You know, that's, that's really all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You wish to be heard, sir, in the front row? Good evening. If you could state your name first and last and spell your last name for the record, please. Nathaniel Gracie, G-R-A. If you could please raise your right hand. Oh, okay. G-R-A. Oh, Nathaniel Gracie. G-R-A-C-I-E. Do you swear or affirm that the comments you're about to make will be the truth? Yes. You may proceed. Um, so I wasn't going to speak tonight, but um, I figured mine as well while I'm here. Uh, just a couple of things that I kind of picked up on. And personally, I grew up in Ashburnham, which is four or five miles from here. Our electric bill growing up was anywhere between 15 to $30. Uh, What's that? Great community. Yeah, great community. And then it come move here to Fitchburg, and my bill at my house is anywhere from 300, 350, 375 in that range. And my house is 1,200 square feet, three bedroom, one bathroom. It's just me. I have no kids. I travel a lot for work, never home. Um, and I'm still paying this ridiculous amount. MassAve has been to my house. I have all LED products, all LED lighting. Um, so I always question the bill when it comes in, but I pay it anyway because we need heat and electricity, right? So last month, or two months ago, I was in South Carolina. And I came home. My flight got delayed. I ended up getting home at 11.30 at night. Woke up for work the next day. 
probably 6.30, not the time I was working down by Foxborough, get home at 6.30 or so and I have no power. I have no heat. And it was during a cold spell in December. And come to find out, and it, it was my fault, but I missed one payment. And I've lived in my house for three years. I always pay my bill. And I get home in the dead of winter after being away to no heat, no electricity. I call Unitel. She says, well, you, your bill got shut off for non-payment. Didn't you get a letter? And I told her a couple times, I said, I was out of state. I didn't get a letter because I got home at 11.30 slept for five hours and went to work and worked 14 hours. So no, I didn't. But what I did get was a envelope crammed in my storm door telling me that my electricity and power was going to be shut off. But I did not get a physical letter in the mail. And I got that letter in the storm door the same day that it was shut off. So I asked the lady, as I'm sitting there in the dark, when my power is going to be restored, and she said, there was no idea, I, I have no idea. There's no way to tell. So for me, it was OK. But imagine a senior citizen or someone disabled that is sitting in the cold because they missed one payment and Unitel can't get out there fast enough to turn their heat on, and they have no way of telling a customer how long it's going to be they're going to have to sit in the cold. So finally, around 9.30, they came back. Um, but what bothered me about it is that there is, they shut it off, and there was never a history of non-payment. Um, and a lot of people that live in smaller places, in fact, a friend of mine lives down the road from me, he lives in a three-bedroom apartment, and his bill, his Unitil bill is anywhere between five, six hundred dollars a month, and there's two people living in the apartment. But I think there are a couple people here that had the right idea, you know, about business and business plans and different things along those lines. And working in a big corporation, when we want to make more profit, what we do is we buy a business or we buy another building. So instead of coming after you know, all these great people here that, and I commend you all for coming to the podium, why doesn't Unitel go and buy another business instead of taking that $3.4 million and getting it from all the people that already pay these huge costs? Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone for attending tonight and for providing such thoughtful and passionate comments. The department appreciates uh, the showing from the community tonight. As I mentioned in the beginning of tonight, Unitil has representatives available here to speak with you, as well as there's a representative here from the Attorney General's office if you have any further questions. Um, so with that, the public hearing is adjourned, and we will go off the record. Thank you.